And welcome back to Skype Talk, everyone. Today's episode, we'll be discussing some bug fixes, new quest, various ramblings about Tarkov and our adventures, <laughs> Chinese mobile Tarkov, uh, Unity getting crazy. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Okay, Tarkov's future is a little questionable. Yeah, so. It's been a little bit of a slower news week, but also in some ways it's been kind of a crazy news week with this whole Unity dilemma going on. Yeah, it's been a bit like, there's been a bit fragmented. I feel like there's lots of little things happening at the moment. And like some of them are big sort of in theory, but um, you know, the actual like day to day impact is pretty low. I guess we could start with Unity just, just straight up with, with this guy. Um, for those who are not aware, Unity decided to put through a, well, they, they proposed a price increase, which is different to the model that they've run so far. Like, it's basically just like a subscription or license fee for Unity at the moment. And Unity is the engine that many games use, including Tarkov and some other big names like Rust, which are on, on the Unity engine. And previously, I think you just paid your license fee and that was it. And what they're proposing to do is that over a certain like revenue and downloads threshold, you then have to pay per, well, per, I think it was per install. I think that was the way that they per install. Mm -hmm. labeled it. And there's like a sliding scale. So, you know, the, the more installs there are, like the less you have to pay, but obviously the more it is overall because you're, you're bigger or whatever. And um, this has sparked off, you know, the most incredible backlash of all time. I was trying to explain it to my wife, actually, because, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the, the guys that... Um, you know, we have like a big WhatsApp group with uh, IRL. Obviously, we're all like following stuff. And one of the guys that I know works uh, in, he's mostly like a, an asset designer kind of thing. And he works with Unity and stuff like that sometimes. So people are like generally interested. But, um, you know, like my wife in the group is just like, what are you guys talking about? Because I was like, whoa, look at this, you know. Um, and she doesn't know what Gary's mod is or anything like that. Like I pasted in one of his tweets into our, into our WhatsApp group, basically saying mm -hmm. like, you know, you effed up. Um, <laughs> and, I, and I was like, I was like, yeah, well, you know, it's this the game engine that a lot of these these games are sort of is the foundation to starting these things. They decided to change the pricing model. I was like, it's a little bit like, um, it's a little bit like Adobe turning up with Photoshop and being like, oh, you're suddenly going to have to pay per picture now, and we're just now going to bill you monthly for every picture that you edit. Like, you're going to have to pay, you know, ten cents or whatever. Um, she was like, well, why don't they just move to a different? Like a different engine, then surely they're just all going to move to somewhere else. And I was like, well, let me think of a different analogy. It's almost a bit like, you know, the, 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 the company that built the foundations of your house being like, we're now going to charge you monthly for the foundations that we installed like 10 years ago. And someone says to you, like, why don't you just change your foundations? It's just like, well, it's not that easy, you know? Like, these people are kind of uh, stuck. You know, if you built your game, I mean, you look at Tarkov, right? Like, it would take an eternity to move it to a new engine. Like, you'd have to be right everything. Um, mm -hmm. Same thing with Rust and all these other games. Like it's just it's not practical. It's not feasible. So clearly, Unity has a lot of sort of monopolistic power in that sense because it's very sticky game engines because you just can't switch and change. But in the same vein, the fact that they've managed they've, they've managed to unite the developer community against them um, in a pretty spectacular way is kind of crazy. It, it really is. A significant PR blunder, let's put it that way. And I, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. Apparently, they're being quite stubborn about it and stuff. I, I'm not sure. I think they've already like rolled back some of what they said that they want to have because originally it was like I can't, it was all sorts of stuff. It was like reinstalls and things. And they've like they've come out and said, no, it's not reinstalls. It's not this. It's not that. Not the other. But the problem is, it's just like it's just such bad faith for people who've used the engine under a license agreement, and now they've said right. that they're changing it. On top of the fact that it's like practically not really doable what they're even saying right like in, even in a, a perfect world where you could track all of these things like installs or whatever perfectly like it would still be like very dubious to do that to you know the community of the people who use your engine and have used it previously and there's like you know it's not like there's any any say in this or change the license agreement or anything like that they can't really say no um so it's very dubious from that perspective but like how you even track installations downloads whatever is you know is anybody's guess it's one of those things it's not really enforceable right what about piracy what about you know there was at the, i think there was a tweet already from uh, a bunch of like disgruntled rust cheat developers or, or something that they've mm -hmm. created this script to allow you to reinstall the game like over and over and over again so you could just like rack up fees for the and I, I know they've come out and said that you know reinstalls now won't do it but you know how are they going to make sure that those people are 
are we installing on the same system? You know, if you're cheat dev, I mean, this is like really niche, but if you're a cheat dev, you could use hardware spoofer to make it look like a new install every time. Just like all of these little things just show how unenforceable it actually is. Like who's actually going to be able to keep track of it? And I did see quite a few comments about it saying that you know, whoever's great idea this was, it almost feels as if they're like so painfully mobile centric that it's just like, oh, we'll just, you know, download yes. the number of installs from the Apple store and from yes. uh, Google Play and just add them up you know that's fine but like on pc it's just not really sensible so yeah unity have basically blown themselves up i mean i, I think devs going forward would be extremely cautious about using them for big projects especially like for small stuff yeah fine you know maybe not too bad but um yeah it's well, bad this is the interesting part is you know a lot of like you know the rust uh developers were basically like yeah this is fucked but it's not necessarily about the money for us like it's you know that's kind of a non-issue it's more about the principle of how they went about doing this which fair enough but like some of the i think this hits more like the indie developers like the people that are just learning trying to learn the software you know like there's this one guy i think when so as a preference if you want to you know get like a pretty good recap besides like an additional recap um check out one peg's video because he did a really good job I thought with uh, his recap on it. Um, but he mentioned the guy that I saw tweeted as well, Danny. And uh, I could probably find him, but he, he does, he, he's like a YouTuber slash developer. Um, and he's made a couple of different games on unity. Uh, they're, they're pretty funny. Actually there's, I've seen this one where it's like, you're a pill and it's an FPS shooter, you know, movement. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, but anyways, he did the math on some of his games, right? Um, because they're, you know, they're completely, I think they're on Steam. I'm pretty sure they're free, but you know, if according to his math, right? Cause it, it's the chart unity provides in my opinion is very confusing because I think it's a monthly criteria as well. Like at first, right. it depends on the, the version you're using, which I'll be all over the place. And apparently they're like. There's a particular version that they're, uh, what's the word? They're getting rid of, um, which some people are upset about on a separate thing. But regardless, mm. um, it depends on the version and it depends on like the monthly installs, how much you get charged. But if you're on like the Unity, you know, I'm a, I want to use the free version. It's just a flat 20 cents per install. It doesn't matter how many installs you get per month. It's just a flat 20 cents, right? So he did the math on his games. Uh, first one's called Muck. Uh, he has, let's see. Oh man, this is so downloads. Okay, so he has, <laughs> and then this is uh, you know retroactively, right? He has twelve mil, uh, yeah, twelve million downloads. Uh, and then on his other game called Crab Game, he has sixteen million downloads, and he totaled up because it'd be twenty cents each. It would, he owe, would owe Unity five million six hundred thousand dollars, which is insane. Now it, you know it is a bit of a joke. Uh, and there's like a you know he he has a comment here because this change doesn't come into effect before January question mark Which I think that's the case. Like they've tried to clarify that. I don't know, dude. It's I haven't looked super close at all the details, the teasing. P's and keys or whatever. Anyways, and the threshold of like a uh, million downloads, so you can subtract 400k. But if my game has <laughs> got these downloads after January 24, this is what I have to pay, which is ridiculous. Like this just screws over any like indie, like because like mind you, he's you know technically he's like running a business on the YouTube side, and like the mm. the the Unity is like part of that. Um. I, I don't know, man. I just think it's so shitty for, like, any, like, indie dev. And there's so many games. I wasn't, like, Path of Exile, for example. I wasn't aware that was a indie game. They're, like, a free-to-play uh, monetization system, right? So, like, yeah. I can imagine this isn't great for them because they're not, like, covering their bases, if you will, for, like, installs. I mean, if someone, like, tries out the game, whatever, doesn't purchase anything, you know, it's just... It's yeah, just... I think they. I think they said that in the tiering. I think there's like two sets of criteria. So I think I don't know whether this was originally or they said this afterwards, where 
there is like a revenue criteria as well. So if you don't yes. make any money from your game, I don't know what that means for cosmetics. Like if you uh, if you sell cosmetics, like does right. it have to be the actual purchase price? I actually am not sure. But um, if, yeah, if you don't make any money, then there wasn't any fee or something. So for and the Unity did say, you know, 95 percent of uh, you know people who use Unity will be unaffected by this change. Which yeah, it's true. But it's like yeah, it is. It's as um, Face Punch was saying, right? It's like the it's the principle of it. And if they want to do this now, then why don't you know they could change it again in the future? It's like they've suddenly opened up this like unknown like they've opened a pandora's box so people are going okay well if you're willing to do this just now like this for something that's so incredibly stupid and there's so bad pr what are you willing to do in the future and it kind of like you're almost writing a blank check by building any significant projects in on unity because you just don't know what they're going to do which is very strange i mean yeah there was a, i mean there's a whole bunch of blogs and stuff about you know the the, the fact that warning signs were, were there in the past but you know, there was that news piece a while back about them joining together with that slightly dubious software company <laughs> and the that. fact that the fact that the current CEO of Unity is the old CEO of EA when they were voted the worst company in America. <laughs> and, you know, they've, they've got some very interesting, I must have some very interesting ideas about monetization <laughs> and about how to do this kind of stuff, you know. The, yeah. It uh, sounds it's like just, it's straight up from the EA FIFA playbook, man. It sounds like it's of. straight up from that. Yeah, it's just like the the more you dig, the worse it seems to get. And it's again, it's the principle of it, and it just worries people. So I don't know what's going to happen, honestly. I mean, you know, projects that are in too deep will clearly carry on using Unity. There's really no alternative. But if you're starting something brand new, I don't know. Unity may have just like literally blown themselves up. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, like I, I mean, I tried to look at it a little bit, but the details for me, there's just a lot of moving parts, and I'm not like plugged into that space enough to really have a very informed opinion at all so with that yeah. said <laughs> what does that mean for tarkov <laughs> speculation i have no clue man like i i imagine bsg is not happy like i would think they're they would be upset at this i i, I can't really say i mean yeah, I, I don't know. And and then like when we factor in what Gary or some of the, you know, rest devs are saying about but I don't think it was Gary, I think it was like one of the moderators, Ali Star. Uh yeah, I can just see the cheating community just being like, fuck you, BSG, you know, we're we're gonna run these scripts and cuck you guys over I, I i don't know man i'm i i and i don't even like how oh, dude I, I just can see nikita being like bleat because <laughs> now they got this other product coming out arena i'm assuming it's going to be a separate install uh, is is it even is it like a dlc like there's so oh man there's just so many issues it's like yeah. such a such an annoying thing to have to like worry about as a developer you know think about yeah because it could become like an existential problem this is the this is the thing about it you know it could be make or break with some of these games i don't think it'll end up having any real impact honestly just because of the the amount of pushback that there's been from the gaming community in general there was quite a funny one uh mega crit who makes slay the spire they they <laughs> their, their oh. statement was quite funny i don't know if you saw that one it says uh, no. we've been hard at work these past two years on a new game, but unlike Slay the Spire, the engine that we've been developing it on is Unity. The retroactive pricing structure of runtime fees is not only harmful in a myriad of ways to developers, especially indies, is also a violation of trust. We believe Unity is fully aware of this, even as they have gone so far as to remove their TOS from GitHub. <laughs> Despite yes. the immense amount of time and effort our team has already poured into development of our new title, we will be migrating to a new engine unless the changes are completely reverted and TOS protections are put back in place. We have never made a public statement before. This is how badly you fucked up. And that was their official statement, which is like, oh, my God. So there's just like so much pushback about this. I imagine that it'll end up becoming, I don't know, it'll probably end up being like, you know, a, a fee of some kind that the, the really big guys end up just having to pay. But it won't be anything as draconian as, you know, and, and, and there has to be some sensible way to actually track, right, how this stuff, you know, gets done. It doesn't it just doesn't make sense the way they propose it. So we will see. But I, I don't think it's going to be an existential problem for all these companies. But the, that's the, the issue. It's like the question into the future. So for now, there's no choice but to you know make as big of a stink about it as possible for all the devs and try to mitigate 
the impact of it. And then in the future, just don't use it. It's actually insane. It's actually insane. Yeah. Um, on that note, another indie dev uh, wrote to uh, Vor- Vostok. Um, mm. They put out a statement, he, uh, which basically says the same thing. Um, fuck you guys. <laughs> He's, I think the I think he said where's okay development will continue on Unity, but the preparations for an alternative platform to begin of Unity does not start revealing their stability, trust, uh, and transparency. So yeah, I mean I as you know to reiterate again, I think indie devs are getting screwed and probably going to try to migrate to a different engine, um, whereas the big guys aren't you know probably upset but probably just going to pay the cost. Right, it's probably just way yeah. too much. It's it's a shitty situation, no matter how you slice it, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, watch this space. We shall see on that. But for now, I don't think anything really changes day to day. But uh, you mean we'll Tarkov see. Unreal isn't coming out, dude? Tomorrow, you're telling me Tarkov that Tarkov Unreal. <laughs> we can only dream. <laughs> True. <laughs> so, uh. I wanted to talk about this. Uh, this bug that uh, it does appear to have been fixed. I'm pretty sure it's been fixed, but it's quite uh, it's quite an interesting one. Let me just find the the YouTube video just so I can like reference who it was who was talking about it. But in short, there is a well, there there was a flea market rep bug mm. where so for a while people were kind of confused as to how people were getting such ridiculous amounts of like flea rep right like so people were level 30 or whatever and they you know have lot, got like flea reps in the you know hundreds and it's just like absolutely insane and it's it looks like people are clearly cheating right like going into the map right. moving up all the loot coming out selling everything but i mean the, the flea rep numbers are, were astronomical and some people really didn't look like they were cheaters right it's like it's very a whole very strange situation well there's a guy called don the zilla he published a video onto YouTube. Oh, I know him. Called um, two flea rep plus two flea rep in ten minutes. Dug of thirteen point five, which basically shows this bug and how it works. And I'm I'm pretty sure that this has been um, removed already. There was um, a bunch of guys in my Discord who were testing it after the video got put in there, and I had a quick look at it as well. And I I think the bug is gone. I mean, I'm not I'm not hundred percent, but I'm pretty sure it's gone now. And effectively, what was happening is there was a a, a not very well used mechanic on the flea market for listing items that was not calculating correctly. So the way that the trick would work is you would get a number of items of the same type. Let's say you have 10 piles of meds and piles of meds you're going to put up on the flea market for, I don't know, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Let's just say 10,000 rubles just to make the, the math nice and easy. So you've got 10 piles of meds, you're going to put them up for 10k each. Instead of just doing that and clicking, you know, select all, whatever, and then just putting in 10,000 and, and then uh, putting them up on the market and it comes up, you know, 10 times at 10K, people can buy however many they want out of your stack. You instead put up, re- there's a little checkbox, which is require all items to be purchased. Do you know how people put up like a pack of items, right? Like a pack of GPUs or whatever. So what you do is you select your 10 piles of meds, you click the require all items to be bought in one go. And then what that means is that rather than typing in the per item price, you have to type in the price for the whole package. So instead of putting 10K in, you add 100,000 in the box and you press, press OK. So that comes up on the fleet. You know, if the piles of meds are going for 13K, yours will come up first, but it'll be 100,000, 10 piles of meds. And you have to buy it all or nothing. All right. But what this was doing was for flea market rep purposes, it was calculating the flea rep gain as if you'd sold every single pile of meds at, at 100,000 uh... rubles. And so the, what the guy presented in the video was ways to amplify this. And basically he said ammo is the best way of doing this. So you basically take any ammo, it doesn't really matter, even like crappy ammo, and you sell it in like batches of 200 or whatnot. And so you then put it as a pack and it's the game thinks that and i i imagine it's something similar to the flea rep calculator or the sorry the flea fee calculation so i imagine it's some weird exponential kind of curve at some point you know like the higher you put the price of an item the, the more the flea rep gets and it goes to such an extent that at some stage if you put it up at multiples of the base price whatever the game thinks that might be the flea rep the flea sorry the flea cost the market transaction tax that ends mm. up 
like overshooting the price of the actual item. I think it's probably something along those lines. And yeah, he was he, in his video. He put up like a bunch of things and got like two rep in like five minutes just by selling a few things. So I mean, in theory, you could have crafted, you know, five four five PP and that kind of thing and sold that on the flea market in stacks of five hundred and got. I didn't even know how much you'd have got. It would have been ridiculous. And the more you did, the uh, crazier it got, right? Because the number that you had to put down was bigger. So you had like five hundred. You'd be like, okay, well. PP is selling for 350, so I do 350 times 500, and that's the number I have to put in. And the game thinks I sold each one for 500 times the normal price. You get, and, and it's a huge amount too. So like, it's just an astronomical amount. Um, and so yeah, so he in his video he had eight slots and 150 rep, something like that. And he's like level 30, and he was just like, yeah, it's just like super easy. I think they've patched it, <laughs> but this does explain it because there were a lot of people floating around on the flea market with. This yeah, you know, really high reputations, right. um, and it was just it was just insane. And now, I, at least, there's a sensible explanation for it. It's not like you know, some of them are probably cheaters, but some people probably just figured this out and just kind of kept quiet. I think pe- some people have been doing it for a while, I believe. Mm. Um, and as naughty, far as naughty. I as far as I'm aware, I I've never seen this before until like a couple of days ago. Mm-hmm. And because of the YouTube video, I reckon it you know suddenly started getting really popular. Um, the only thing about that I thought was like kind of interesting is he was like, "Oh yeah, you know, go around the game like I, you know, I use Rat Scanner or whatever." And I was just like, "Oh man, don't say that! Like it's against TOS. Like there's no way that they can ever catch you because it doesn't interact with the game because it's basically just an image capture program, really." Yeah. But like, you're catching yourself in 4K here. Like this is, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, there's the only way that you get detected is if you you know accidentally blow up on a YouTube video about a game breaking bug and uh, and say it. So don't, don't do that. But um, yeah, no, it was, it was interesting. It was interesting. I was like, ah, oh, fair enough. Like these random things where a piece of a calculation slips through because it's just using the default calc and uses the, the pro- rather than price per item, it's using the overall price to do the comparison and give you flea rep. It's kind of nuts. I can see it, you know, I can see it. And it's not a very well used feature either. You'd see hacks occasionally, but not that often. And that leads me to believe that, yeah, some people did actually know about this because you would run into them sometimes. And they always, I'm always really dubious, you know, when you see seven pack or whatever, and you're like, hmm, you know, is this, is this just, am I going to pay like 500k for like one part of med? Like, how does this work again? Because people used to catch people all the time yeah. doing like dodgy stuff like that, you know, where you'd, yeah, yeah it was just, it'd be some crazy, crazy thing. Um, my favorite one for that, actually, this is a bit of a side tangent. My favorite one used to be where people would put the most ridiculous discounted item. So they're at the top of the list always because it's like so cheap, but they'd have so many that you wouldn't actually, and they'd like have them hidden away in thick cases and stuff. They had so many that you weren't actually able to buy them, even if they, even if you had a completely empty stash because you needed the nesting of the cases to make it work. And what it would be would be an advert for their Twitch, right? Yeah. So somebody had like, um, (laughs) I think he had like purified water or something. I can't, I can't, it was something like that, or like water filters or, or whatever. And it was like 350 water filters. And he put them up at a price of like one ruble. So there was like basically no transaction tax. So you could just put it up for 24 hours. And he'd always be at the top of the list of an That's item that funny. everybody uses. And I actually went to get And I was like, who is this guy? And it's like da 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 TTV. And you go check him out. And he's called like, you know, his title of his video is like, you know, the water guy or something. And it's like, oh, you know, that's actually quite smart. Like a billboard on the flea market that mm-hmm. like everybody sees because everyone's buying water filters towards the mid game. And yeah, it's funny. It's funny. So, uh, yeah, it just reminded me of that. But anyway, I'm I'm pretty sure that this bug is gone now. But that it does explain how people managed to get to such high reps without cheating. It wasn't a cheat, just a glitch. <laughs> Interesting yep. stuff. Mm-hmm. In other news, we have more ETS testing for Tarkov. They put out another update for it saying, we're starting a new series of tests with the ETS server. These tests will be aimed at finding solutions to current issues. Always good. Migrating to Unity 2021. Oh. As well as testing the functionality of upcoming updates. So maybe we'll see Unity 2021 uh, at some stage. Uh, you know, I, don't, I don't think that's going to actually do anything to the game, but it gives them more tools to... Yeah, optimize streets a bit better and, and whatnot and actually try and get some more performance. So we'll, we'll see about that. We'll see what happens and whether we get Unity 2021 before December. I, I think we probably will. I, would, I mean, yeah, I would imagine so. But who really knows? We shall see. 
Um, and yeah, I mean, referencing streets, there was a change that Logical Solutions has posted, which is about decreasing the number of PMCs on the map. Now, I'm not sure exactly what that is to do with, whether that is just a performance thing, whether they isolated that PMCs were causing some problems. I do find it kind of funny, though, that Nikita's just like, you know, 60 players, no problem, we've tested it, you know, it's all good. Um, <sighs> and it's just like, oh, there's a billion scavs and loads of PMCs, and it's kind of problematic. I mean, maybe they just thought there were too many players, you know, there's too much spawn, spawn killing and that kind of stuff, I don't know. I think, let me check, check what it actually changed to. Um, I think he said, yeah, so it was reduced from 15 to 20 to 12 to 16. I haven't really seen much difference in performance, but okay. streets is extremely variable. Yeah. It's very hard to tell. It's like one raid you scav in and it's, I mean, a scav is different, right? Because you start halfway through the raid, but it's like you scav in and it's 90. You PMC the next raid and it's 50. You PMC the next raid and it's like 85 at the beginning. And then after the first for 10 minutes, then, it's 50, then it goes down to 60. And it's just like, oh, I just can't, I can't tell. You know, raid to raid, even with no change, it seems so different, which is very strange. But yeah, so they pretty much knocked off like four players on average per raid. Um, so yeah, we'll see. I mean, there are a lot of scouts on the map. I don't know whether that really does make... The difference or not i just i just don't really know but yeah there's less pmc so maybe the map is slightly less congested than it was before i mean streets streets is kind of nuts especially around caban and lexos and those kind of areas because <coughs> everybody wants to go and go and kill caban and everyone wants to go to lexos and it's just like the new thunderdome is insane over there right now so that helps a little bit um and then yeah there's actually some more boss spawn increases as well which is kind of intriguing like we're only just over a month in and the boss spawn rate, I mean, I know it's, it's, it's a short wipe. This is the reason. It's the short wipe. You hear that? Like, <laughs> anytime any changes, man, it's because it's a short wipe. It's like, okay, all right. Yeah. All right. But um, I think this is the quickest we've ever seen boss spawn rates at these levels. It's now 30 for all the bosses, and cultists mm -hmm. are 5 to 10. I guess it's big. Every third raid, you get a, the boss for that map in that raid. I guess it's, it's big, but I, yeah. I like it. I think it's fun. I, I, it's good. Like, the, the bosses are cool because you. It's that thing we said about before where once everybody's suppressed, there's like no sound on the map anymore. But the bosses make a lot of noise, you know? There's like nades and there's voice yeah. lines and there's unsuppressed gunfire because the AI's shooting a lot and big gun turrets going off and mm -hmm. you know, depending on which boss, it's, it's, it's cool. So I actually quite like the bosses. It makes the raid feel more full um, and like you know where the action's happening, so that's pretty cool. So yeah, there's a few different bits and pieces happening. Um, oh yeah, there's one other thing as well. There was another update so they put through some kind of like networking update. I'm not sure exactly what the aim of it was, but my God, it was awful. I, and I played it a couple of times. I think it was on one of the days I don't stream on, thank God. And um, I scabbed a few raids, but you would drag items into your backpack and they'd stay there for a second and then move. And there was like a, a noticeable latency between moving stuff around. Like maybe they yes. moved the looting server site or something. So that's like, you know, you, you drag the item, you let go. It goes to the server, it comes back, and then it shows up in your bag. I don't know. It felt like that. Probably wasn't that, but it felt like that. And it was. It felt so bad, like really terrible. Um, and they said, yeah, this update featured partial rollback of changes to networking and inventory operations. Those changes resulted in stutters as well as problems with the work of the, of the inventory. We'll continue to work on network performance, blah, blah, blah. It is intriguing because there, there are certainly some issues with the back end, like people keep getting the hands bugs and stuff um, where your hands get stuck. And I keep getting this weird one where, and I've had it again the other day, I think maybe this is partly what they were trying to fix, where you open up your bag and you're looting somebody and then you can't put the items in your bag because there's a desynchronization between where the server thinks the items are and where it looks like on your client. And you have to close your inventory and reopen your inventory and say, I don't know, say you've got like an MMAC inside your bag and you move it down and then put some stuff on top but it won't let you. Well, you, your client thinks it's in the bottom slot. Or if you tab and tab back in again, it's actually in the top slot. And you have to like move it again. And, like, re do you have to close and reopen it to resync with the server? Like, it's silly. I don't, I don't know why this is happening, but anyway, they've had to roll it back because the, the, the change was so bad. So that was uh, yeah, that was really interesting because I don't I don't know whether BSG have ever rolled back something, or they've never said it anyway. They've never said like we roll back the stuff, but I'm, I'm glad they did because it felt so awful. It felt so awful to play church. It was horrible to. Oh yeah, 
I was playing okay. that day as well, and it was just, dude, the game was like stuttering. Like I was on shrine thinking it was like stuttering. Uh, the net that was like tons of rubber banding, which I like never get. Um, of course, you get the inventory acting all goofy eye on me, and it was <laughs> it was awful, dude. It felt like playing Wipe Day, uh, like you know, a couple years ago. It was really mm. bad. Yeah. So Spe- yeah. Speaking of which, um, if you don't get anything else pressing, I got a fun little story time on uh, some Tarkov adventures. So. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it was uh I think it was Saturday I was playing. And um yeah, I was doing doing some quests, doing some questing, and uh I figured uh I was like, oh god, dude. I mean I, and let me let me because you know, trying to mid max here, get the most amount of quests done and least amount of time possible. Uh, so I was looking at Lighthouse because I had a couple quests, and um, you know what there is something lighthouse related. And I can't remember the detail, but like you want to do it so that you get the unlock for something. Do you know what I'm talking about? I think you've There's mentioned it before. Maybe. Uh, if we shuffle it all be. around, so I can't remember. It might. I, Was it I, one of the early tasks? Yeah, I think it is. Um, like grabbing the letter from the door or something like something really easy like that. Or was it one of the later ones? I. I can't remember, man. I think it, it might be an unlock for like a gunsmith part or some other quest down the line that's useful. I can't remember the detail, but anyways. So yeah, I went there. I had to like go grab the the briefcase from the little docks, uh, the letter, mark some tanks, mark you know, go visit the bodies or whatever. So yeah, I went. I went and got the bodies, and then I went down. To Marin because I had the key, nothing really there. Mm. And I went and grabbed the briefcase, and now it's headed towards Jaeger's letter. And I had like an SVT, uh, my my pistol, of you know, course. my my, my <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, some, my rat rig, you know, the classic kit, right? And uh, I was pretty worried about getting blasted by some <laughs> the the. The rogues at the Mount Ticker Day Launcher, but thankfully it didn't happen. So I was, you know, like on my way into like the little villa area, shot at a scab a few times, whatever. But then I hear like suppressed shots from like a SR 15 or something going off. I'm like, oh God, it's time to get out. Like, I got these two quest items on me, or one that, you know, I want to like, I don't have to do this again. Like, I hate this map, right? Um, so I just go over to the Jaeger's letter, but then I hear something ahead and I peek around the corner, and I'm kind of like in the the swamp area, where yeah. you know it's basically where the letter's at. And um, so I peek around the rock on on my left, and there's just a, me and a PMC staring at each other. I'm like, oh shit! So I start shooting my SVT. And mind you, prior to this, I had realized that I forgot to bring up backup ammo, so I only have, and I only brought like two or three mags. So I have <laughs> like a mag and a half. Of ammo left from like fighting these scavs earlier, so I I managed to kill this guy. But then his buddy to the right comes around, and um, you know he's kind of like I hear him in like the shit the shed next to me, so he starts running out. So I'm shooting at him, but I only have like two bullets left. I have to like reload, and then I shoot once, and I'm like out completely, and then I'm like <laughs> my legs broken. I'm like panicking, trying to get on the corner. And he's like reloading, so I was like, oh my god, I got my pistol. So I pull my pistol. He comes around, swings around, and I like try to like. I knew I like I had to get the headshot because I was like I was like hyper focused on that, but he was like running up the hill, so I had to like you know move my mouse mm-hmm. all crazy like and you got the recoil. I managed to get him with the headshot, and because I saw he had a boonie hat, so like it worked out flawlessly. But it was you know it was super stressful because I'm like 90 HP right, and my legs are broken. You know I was like panicking. I, I went to like heal when I meant to like uh, you know pop the yeah. adrenaline. It was is crap crap shoot so I, I i go i am like realize a lot of noise was made i remember the guy with the suppressor was shooting earlier because it wasn't then i'm pretty sure because it was like back behind me so like great he's probably gonna come over here so i go inside the shack start to cms i'm like no this this is a bad spot let me go prone in the bush start prone in the bush start cmsing then i hear something walking on wood again i'm like ah oh, why me why why god why <laughs> 
And then they start voice lighting. It's a scav. But the way it's moving, I'm like, dude, this has got to be a player scav. And then there was a player scav camping us out the whole time. So I didn't even get the CMS finish. I had to just like heal up my, you know, we got like, I'm like a chicken nugget right now, dude. I'm like sitting behind this little, like get up from the bush. I'm like behind this little like stall, like this, <laughs> this, you know, outhouse basically. <laughs> I'm fighting this player scout, dude. He's trying to fight me. It was so scuffed. I, but he, like, I guess he wanted to run away with the loot he had, or he wanted to go loot the bodies I had killed. So he tried to, like, run past me eventually. And, like, I managed to get him with, like, a SVT. I guess I had, like, one bullet in a different mag or something. I don't remember. <laughs> um, so, okay, finally, I can go loot. So I go to loot these players. Right? I heal up. I go to loot these players that I killed. And... I saw they were stacked, dude. This one, he had a raid backpack, dude. He had killer oh. armor on. He had uh, M1A in his primary, and he had PKM in his secondary. What? No way. I know. I was like, dude, what is this guy doing? And then I realized by looking through his kit that he had, um, sorry, he didn't have a raid backpack. He had a tattoo. Whatever. He had, uh, he had killed someone because he had like dog tags or whatever. Mm. And he had, a, he had a Mashka helmet on. That was like damage. I was like, dude, what is going on? It was so bizarre. And inside, so not only did he have the PKM, the Mashka helmet, the killer armor, but inside the bag he had the uh what's the class six armor that's got the The Hex grid or the Zuk Six? The 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 Zabra the Zabralo. He had the Zabralo. The, the, the huge the massive one. There was a Zabralo in his backpack, yes. What? And it was like a hundred 30 out of like 40, 145. Like it was barely. Like, what the I hell? was like, dude, what is going on? I, like when I saw the Mashka helmet, I was just like instantly like, oh my God, was this guy cheating? Because <laughs> like, who wears the Mashka helmet? Mm. All right. But I think he just killed someone that was like doing a meme kit with like the Mashka Zabralo PKM. Oh, PKM? Yeah. 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 Cause the other, the other, his buddy also had. Like, he had, like, an RFB and then, like, a pistol or whatever, but he also had, like, an AK or something in his mm. uh, secondary. So, like, they had killed a couple players, but, oh, my God, I was, like, 100 kilos plus coming out. I'd pop the meal, dude. It was just, like, I did, I forgot to loot the killer armor, but I got, mm. like, 90% of it, all the loot there. It was, like, it was so much loot. Oh, it was just, like. Please, God, let me get out of this raid of all this loot. <laughs> I just, like, scuttled my way, like, had to, like, jump up each individual rock and, like, wait to gain enough stamina to go up the, the fat That's shoreline. That's insane. Yeah, it was, insane. it was pretty insane. I was pretty satisfied with that. Even just the PKM. Like, which was it? The Because are there two? Is it the yeah. PKP and the PKM that you can get? I can't actually remember. Yep. Um, I don't know which one it was in particular. But it did have, I think it had PS or BS ammo in it. I can't remember. Or maybe, or maybe it was BT. It was, it was like, you know, it wasn't LP. It was better than LPS. Yeah, it was like two mags. So it was 200 rounds of like decent mm. ammo. Not the best, but, you know, high up there. It was either BT yeah. or it might have even been mixed a little bit. I was just looking. You can get either from, from Kavan. But yeah, I mean, that's if, if it was the PKP. And that's like even more important because um, that's it. That's in the new gunsmith quest. You need a PKP to finish gunsmith now, which mm. is kind of crazy. Yeah, I saw that, and you get like five bitcoins or something in a weapons case. Mm. Pretty crazy reward. Yeah. So if you did get the PKP, then that's mad lucky. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm hoping you know eventually, uh, you know, I get to fight Kabam. I mean, it, it's. Just something to do. It's kind of a cheesy fight from what I've seen. Like you just bait him and then once he's reloads and you go and push him and shoot him and kill him. Like he has like a gigaton of HP, but that just seems like the flawless method of killing him reliably. I think it's more about like in my experience so far, it's more about like getting in there and actually having the opportunity to go and do it as opposed to like killing Kaban himself, you know? It's Yeah. It's like the fact that yeah, eight out of the twelve PMCs are all just converging on Lexos. Like that's that's the hardest part about the whole thing. Oh my god, I I got I got stuck in there as well, and I'm pretty sure Caban was there, and I just didn't have the opportunity to leave because I'm still figuring it out. Like I've not played much around that that area. Mm -hmm. um, although even though I've been playing a, a ton of streets, um, they've added some new quests as well, which I could talk about in a sec. But yeah, I went in through 
the entrance towards you know the, like the Tepecot building, the one that you sort of go out. That's sort of like the back entrance, I guess. What'd you call it? Is it? It's like the big building that says like Tepecot on on the top. I don't think I ever noticed that. Oh really? It's the one. It's the entrance that is closest to like vehicle extract. Okay. Uh, so um... it's the kind of it's the one sort of like that links to the back of Concordia. Because there's two ways in now, right? Into Lexos. There's yeah. the front streetway, which is from like the main street. Right. There's and the... you go, you know, there's, uh, I'm trying to think of how to describe it, but there's kind of like the, the crossroad bit at the front. Yeah. And it all t- used to be barricaded off. You, you can't get in through the side any, through like the main, like on the main street. I don't think you can even get inside there now because um, mm. there's just like claymores everywhere and it's all blocked yeah. off. So you can either walk in through the actual main road. I think it's opposite like the bank or something. There's yeah. like the post office is straight in front of it. Um, and it's like the apartments above, like with the, the bank or whatever. Right. But that area, that way seems really sketchy. Whereas the other side is a bit easier. There's like another, like, you know, gate and mm-hmm. stuff. And that's the, the bit which we used to be kind of the old, like, scav camp entrance, that kind of area. But all of that's blocked off at the sides now as well. You can only really get in through that, that road right at the back towards the Concordia and vehicle extract area. Anyway, so I like, I tried to go in that way. And I ran in, and I saw somebody further ahead, and I think it was one of Caban's guards. And then I get shot at but from my right-hand side, like, out of the, the sort of administration building that's in there. And I was just like, oh, God. And it was literally, as I, like, turned into the very first container, my leg got blacked out. <laughs> I was like, oh, man. And like, anyway, this is, like, so early. Because, like, I don't know how you're supposed to get in there. Like, if somebody else is, if someone else is in there, there's so few angles that you can actually get into that area now. Like, I need to practice a lot more. But, um... Because I've been doing the other stuff on the streets, really, rather than this. But we did have a little good last time. Anyway, I got, I got stuck in, like, the most horrendous stalemate of all time. I was genuinely there for, like, 30 minutes. And, like, <laughs> there was, just, there was like, just nothing I could do. I was like, I yeah. need to get out of this container. Because if I get stuck in here, then I'm eventually going to die. I don't know if it was a PMC or a scav. A scav, like, a player scav ended up turning up. There were two guys who died. So when I went in, and this was early in the raid, there were two guys who were already dead, like, literally at the front. Um, where I went in and this player scav rocks up after our sort of initial engagement and starts looting the two bodies at the front side and I hear some people voiping and chat said to me oh you should void them I'm just like this guy's not going to let me out there's no way I don't, want to, I don't even engage in that because I'm just going to give myself away and then whatever but anyway they, he starts voiping with somebody else so maybe it was a PMC with the player scav I'm not sure I eventually just like pop a painkiller and like jump out and run like do a sort of 180 around the last little bit to get into the sort of left hand side of the camp and then I was basically just stuck there for so long, right? And this guy who was up in the in the top, he like we were trying to play peekaboo, but every time I like went out, there's like the two mounted guns facing the door with like Caban's people on it. So I was just like, oh my god, there's like a player scav at the door. There's a player, it's either a PMC or another scav. I don't, I don't know which one it is. Up in like the second story of the admin building, every time I tried to left lean peek around the thing, freaking Caban's guards are there. I was like, this is all. <laughs> oh, like, what am I gonna do? Not like, the left hand like peek. No. And left hand peek too. It was awful. I was like. I feel like I only have two choices, either just to like wait and slowly wait for people to make mistakes and to yeah. pick the AI off like after it, you know, they lose aggro and then I pick one off and the player scab makes a mistake and gets into some random line of sight and then I kill them. Or I literally just run out and die. I could mm. just run out and die and reset, right? Like, I, am I am I True. ready to spend like 30 minutes just in yeah, here? Yeah, right. Um, which is the thing. But I was like, well, let's try. I try. And like I had, I was fighting back and forth with this, this guy. Like he came, he actually left the compound and went round. Um, um, we had like you know, a full auto battle through the fencing, but like I didn't manage to kill him and he came back in and then he just didn't put himself in a position again where I could shoot at him, which is really unfortunate. And I was still trying to figure out like the angles inside because I've been around in that area a lot as a scav before the changes happened, before yeah. the claymores and all that. But I found I was like, well, where can I actually go now? Because the, the whole landscape is so different after the, the claymores and the changes and Caban and the guards and the mounted guns and stuff. It's like, it doesn't feel like the same place. So I was like, well, where can I stand that allows me to shoot like over the boxes and stuff? Where can I stand that's not going to get me killed? Like a couple of times I like jumped up onto one of the cars and it was just like, two, two, like <laughs> SVT shots coming straight over my head from some, one of the people. I was right. just like, oh, it's okay, because I can't stand there. I was like, try and angle through this way. And I did, I managed to get shot off through one of the containers. There's like some little like window slats. And I was like, Doing the like gradual lean and saw someone as they walked past because they were like milling around in that area. I managed to like get him a couple of times, but didn't actually do enough damage to kill him. 
my god it was just such a trial and i ended up hiding like right in the corner like right at the back behind one of the trailers um because i was hoping that he'd come out again to try mm-hmm. to like flank around a second time um there's this like weird shower curtain kind of thing in there that i've like spent part of my time in, like trying to protect myself but um i realized i should have gone like behind the trailer before because i would have actually been able to kill him so i stayed there for, for a while but it turned out the guy just got fed up and bored and he like came down and started to come around because he had the right peak on me as he was coming around the corner mm. so i just sat there and was just like okay well, let's just wait for him to make a mistake and he ended up like wandering in maybe thought i was gone or whatever and like as he walked past like he wasn't even looking and i just killed him so that was that so i was like okay he's dead like the player scouts are, are all gone now um and then I like had to kill like a couple of the other guards, but but like by this point I had like zeroed armor. I had like no meds left. It was just like it was crazy because I'd gone through all my ammo pretty much. I had you know mags with like twenty two in this one. I had like seventeen in this one. I had the full one in my gun kind of thing. And I was like God, like and then Cavan was in there and chat was just like, now you can go kill Cavan. I'm just like really like I don't think now is the time. Like I really <laughs> like it kind of was a prime opportunity sort of, but like with with no armor at all. I was like I'm just gonna get one tapped by a, a guard that just so happens to right. have like. 762 ps or something you know it's just i'm just i'm just gonna get killed like yeah hp or whatever because sometimes they have like stupid ammo don't they the guards so i was yeah. like i'm just not interested so i did an- end up managing to like waddle out and go all the way down to damaged house which isn't too too bad there once you can cross the street but my god it's it's tough in there it's tough it's just so <laughs> hard to to get in and do anything like um especially solo i, I did actually watch yeah. a little bit i was like editing and stuff i watched a little bit of air wing um it was either yesterday or the day before maybe it must have been the day before because that was wednesday and i i don't i don't play on a wednesday and i was watching a bit of him and he was kind of doing that exact thing and it was like playing solo and like going there and you know you kill one guy and then you kill some of the guards and then like two teams turn up and then you get pinched between two of them there's nades mm. everywhere and like when you're on your own it's so difficult in there it's like the same it's the classic solo issue of because you don't have somebody covering your back you have to cover all angles so when you get pinched it's just like and there's nowhere to run to to flank i think that's the hardest part about it like previously you could go out of the gate this side, or you could jump on this box and jump out here, or you could go through the admin building and like come out of this door, or you could go out the back section, or you could go up into Sparja or whatever. But like that sort of playstyle fits the solo playstyle quite well because you know you can you can fight, you can run around, you can pop out somewhere else, and they don't right. know how many of you there are. You don't have to worry about shooting other people. So the more chaotic and the more swirling the fight gets, the better it is as a solo player. Often, whereas now it's like you can enter in these two places anywhere else. You die. If you go in this bit, you die. If you go up there, you die. Because it's like play more, caban, whatever. Um, and so it just like it really limits the playing field, and it makes it just like amplifies the strength of teams. I feel a lot of the time because you can just cover all the angles and just wait. Um, because you can flush the single guy out, and then someone else kills them. And it's like I saw Erring having the same issues <clears> as uh, <throat> I can I can envisage myself having. So, but it was, it was fun. Um, we'll see. We'll see. There was um, there was a uh, there was a cheeky little spot that I've like had a look at which i'm sure there's probably some more too in concordia if you go into the apartment building that's closest to caban's area you can go right down to the end of the apartment and you can actually see that bottom entrance which is kind of cool i like as a scav i've shot at a couple of pmcs out of there and you can snipe some of the scavs off the top of the roof as well which sorry is kind you of go in, in the concordia and where so there's so there's the three concord you've got the concordia right. courtyard if you go into the apartment block which is kind of closest to Sparja, and closest to Lexos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if we think about the map, oh, it's wait. the easternmost Concordia apartment. Okay. Um, yeah. If you go in through the front entrance, where you're like from the looking courtyard, across to construction. So if you yeah, if you were looking so construction from Concordia, construction is north. Mm-hmm. So if you look to your right, it's that kind of the one that's. I think it's the really tall one. Um, it's the one that sort of stands oh, on its okay, own. There's okay, like, okay. Gotcha, the L gotcha. shape. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then there's the one that stands on its own. It's that one. If you go into the front of that one. And then you go up the stairs. I think it's either first or I can't remember how many stairwells you have to go up. Anyway, if you go to the, into the corridor and go, you can go left if you want. That gives you a bit of a look over Sparger. If you go right and go all the way to the end, there's an apartment that looks over Lexos. And yeah, uh, the barricades are kind of up and stuff. You can't see everything, but you can see people coming in. You know, if people are trying up, to yeah. if people are trying to position in and out, whatever, like hiding at the like at the back section, you can see them there. You can pick off some of the guard snipers on top of the roof. It's actually kind of neat. So um, I spent a bit of time there. That was quite a fun spot. But uh, yeah, I'm like, trying to figure out if there's any other good places as well. I think you might be able to get into the bank apartments above the yes. front entrance too. I haven't tried that yet, so we'll see. But yeah, I'm still figuring out the area and like how to how to do it as a solo. It's like one of those things. If you don't go straight away, someone else kills Galban. If you if you if you go in straight away, you just die. It's like it's a difficult problem. 
There is one, a, you know, an escape route. I don't know how viable it is, but if you're inside that, you know, nest, if you will, because, you know, you only have the two entrances and exits, but there is a third, which you go into the garage and go up the second floor, and you have to breach the door open, but you can mm -hmm. jump across, because if you go down the stairs, you're going to die to the claymores, oh. but you can jump across into well, Spodja, yes. But I don't, ah. I don't know how viable it is, but there is, it is an option. I, mean, I found it out, I was playing Scav, and we were looting, me and another Scav, like, looting the area. And then, you know, we, I was like, oh, what's up here? And he's like, no, don't go down that way. And I was like, oh, you know, doing a little trolling. Like, oh, I'm going to go down here. And, and, and I was like, wait a minute, can you jump across? And he's like, I don't know. I was like, I'm going to find out. And then I <laughs> jumped across. He's like, no. But, yeah, as long as you... You know, make it in. It's, it's a pretty easy jump. You just gotta make it inside. You have to like lava. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, just don't, just don't miss. That's all. Mm. Mm -mm. Yeah, maybe I should play a bit more scav in that area. The problem is, is that Cavern's guards will kill you unless you're six reps. So, yeah, it's. Uh, I guess like yeah, he's not there all the time though. It, it's just like at the minute, he just feels like he's there constantly. I don't know why. I know it's only thirty percent, but like every street trade, I feel like he's there. I hear him. I hear the guns going off and stuff. Like, I do some of the scavs. I'm actually not sure what happens if he's not there. Do some of the guards are, are they there, or is there like scavs in there? So. Get the gun, get on the guns, or I haven't, I haven't really figured that out yet. Maybe maybe scavs do, um, but there is no guards. Mm. Like there's just regular scavs. Yeah, you know. I guess they're still pretty formidable when they get on the turrets. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to check it out on scav, I think, and just like, or even just offline as well, just like figure out exactly where the claymores go. Um, there was like one point where I was like, if I'm behind this trailer. And I want to leave. If I like jump onto the edge of the fencing and then jump again, <laughs> can I get it? Can I get over yeah. the claimers without dying? And Ugh. like ev everyone was just like, "I see where you're coming from, but like I would try it now." Yeah. Now's the <laughs> so, right like, time. Yeah, the... I want to figure out all of those exactly. I want to figure out those those ways in and out because it's just like I just don't see how I'm going to do it otherwise. Like I'm just going to have to accidentally get an empty raid or something, or like everyone right. else dies to Caban for whatever reason. Oh, like third party people as they're fighting him and get lucky. Like I just I don't see how I'm gonna do it otherwise. So I need to figure out some more of these ways in and out so that I can uh, compete with the squads that are going to go and kill him. But like everyone's gonna to want to do it, given that you need to get his PKP to do to do gunsmith, which um which does bring me on to the the next segment, I suppose, which is about the new quests, which is kind of cool. I don't know if you've looked at any of them yet. I know some people bit. aren't doing streets because they, the quests aren't, none of them are required for Kappa. Which hmm. is kind of interesting. But I've tried to do loads of them because they are really good XP and I love playing streets and um, I'm not that fussed about Kappa as you, as you well know. But uh, I did the one which was the The Quest that came out. There's like a whole bunch of different ones that came out. But uh, one of them was called The Door, which is the one that oh. most people were going on about. And uh, The Door says... Uh, but basically, it's from a mechanic, and he says, I have a delicate matter. I'm a man of science, and I always used to find an explanation for everything. He basically says that there's a, a place where all the scans are muffled as if there's some kind of like blocking equipment or something. And you have to go and put two Wi-Fi cameras in this stairwell. Um, and the only real... Uh, I don't know, if, does he even give you... Yeah, he says there's an astronaut mural on the wall, which is you know, the only real clue that he gives you. But it's basically... It's kind of near the archway, you know, the old archway that used to be the extract on streets. Um, yes. It go, it now it now goes out onto the, like the main Klimov Street that's now been expanded. Yes. If you were if you were in like the old part of the map, looking at the archway, it's in one of the buildings on the left. Um, but in there, there's a there's a stairwell, and it's actually kind of like it's actually kind of unfair, is the way that I would describe this quest because you have to get up to. I think it's the third story. And then there's a, so there's a stairwell. Yeah, you have to get to the third floor. And there's a stairwell, and you have to plant one camera on the stairwell, which is fine. You could just do that, you know, however. But the issue with it is, is that when you get up to, like, the second floor, the third, like, the, the stairwell is, like, completely covered in just, like, junk. Now, my, like, you know, right. players get trained by stuff. Yeah. And my talk of training tells me stairwell covered in junk equals inaccessible. Yeah. <laughs> and I wouldn't even try because it's been that way for four years. 
And everyone was like, no, 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 you can jump over the stuff and get to the third floor. And I'm just like, really? You see it? Like, this doesn't look like... And yeah, lo and behold, you, you can just jump over the things and like, you know, mountain goat your way up there. And I was like, dude, I hate this because this is like, it goes against... Mm-hmm. It's, it's just like, it's like anti-game design, you know? It's like, I mean, BSV right. love that kind of stuff, but it's like subversion of expectations in like a bad way, in my opinion. Where yeah, they do a little trolling. A little trolling. It's it's a little bit like the whole, you know, oh, it's a, it's an apple juice. No, it's just a prop. You know, it's like, I, right. it sort of reminds me of that kind of thing. It's the school of game design of pain. If anybody's ever played <laughs> I Want to Be the Guy, it's it's like it's like I Want to Be the Guy. Yeah, it's yeah. exactly that. It's like, you, yes, know, you just have to like learn good, the stuff. Good analogy, yeah. And it's like, oh, it trains you to do things. And then like on purpose, it's just like, oh, now that's not true anymore. No, you're like, you know, we, we taught you to do this. And now that's yep. the thing that's going to get you killed. You made an assumption and now you're dead. So I don't really like that very much, but anyway, it's a thing. You jump up to the third store, store or the third floor, and then you have to use the new key. You have to use the, the rusted bloody key to get into the special room, which is kind of cool because this key didn't exist on wipe, I'm almost certain, and it drops seemingly only on streets, but you can get it on scavs and stuff. I, I don't know, like lots of people are saying like, oh, it's super rare. I don't know if it's necessarily that rare. I think it's just because it was new and nobody had it. And you can't put it on the flea, and you can't put it in your secure container either, which is kind of crazy. So it's a little bit like those labs items for the hideout, a little bit. Man, they have such weird... <laughs> yeah. So uh... what's interesting about that is that if you find the key, like I did, I killed a player, and he had it on him, and then you leave the raid, like I did, because I didn't have the Wi-Fi cameras, because I said to myself... I'm going to bring in two Wi-Fi cameras in case I find the key in the raid, and then I forgot. Classic. Um, so now that I've left, I come back into it, and I think this is the way it works for this key. You then come back into raid. Well, the key is no longer finding raid. So if someone kills me, the key disappears. <laughs> oh, I love, it. I love. It, they can't even find it because I don't <laughs> think the key is droppable. That's so great. Oh my god, that is so great, dude. I love it. So someone has to have found it in. I, th- I think that's the case. I'm I'm pr- I'm pretty sure it is, but yeah, I, I would, could be I wrong. I think that's, that's how it works. The case, yeah, yeah. So anyway, you get the key. You go. You plant the Wi-Fi camera up in the stairwell, and then you unlock the door, and you have to go through a series of corridors, mm-hmm. and it's like spooky, proper spooky, like shrouded, draped things, and you can't right. see past them. And you you just click through them, and then you into the next section, and the next section is like kind of weird. I was like half expecting somebody to pop out. Until That's I realized, weird. I was like, oh, I did it. it like, it, the door doesn't lock itself. So I was like, okay, well, there can't be anyone else in here because, like, I was the one that unlocked the door. Um, <laughs> you, can, you can actually go and complete the quest just by checking late in the raid. And somebody might have hit it, right? So you can just go and put the Wi-Fi camera in right at the end. There's, like, a door with loads of chains over it, which you have to plant the Wi-Fi camera in. But only one person has to come and unlock it, right? After that, you can... It's a bit like um, planting the, the, the marker in Marked Room yeah. on Customs, right? Somebody yeah. else can come and unlock it. That's fine. Anyway, so we did it, and in there, there's keys all along the the window sills. But all the, the all the windows of us like yeah blacked out and like boarded up. But there's keys along the window sills. There's like high loot in you know, a few places. You probably saw like all of the videos with like you know hog new room. You know, I watched one log- million rubles or whatever. I watched Logical's uh, video tweet on it. Um, that was it. Mm-hmm. So I think it was yeah, the like- offline raid. Someone was showing him the keys there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's a bunch of people who went in there and they got like ultra med, they got, mm. you know, like a, some, some crazy stuff like Mark Room keys, whatever. It was like, you know, millions worth of keys in one raid. I went in there and I got jack shit. Like most <laughs> of the viewers were just like, this is the worst one that I've seen. You know, it was terrible. Right. I got like basically nothing of value. It was awful. But uh, we got the quest done. Um, but it was, it was kind of cool. I like the fact that they had this room ready. Like it was just a random locked door that you couldn't get into in the new area. They're like, no one has really been to that building. And then they're like, oh, we've just like dropped the key into the loot pool with, along with the new quest that they've added. And boom, here it is. Off you go. Like, I, that was kind of fun to have it just randomly get added to the game part with through the wipe. I, I thought that was, that was nice. Yeah. It's just, oh, it's so interesting. I'm still like stuck on the can't be put in your container, can't be sold on the flea market thing. It's like so, you know what I mean? It's just like, why is this one key like that out of all the other keys? Mm-hmm. It's it's weird, and it's also I think it's a hard spawn based off what I don't know if it's in loopholes as well. Um, well. I think it's on scavs and filing cabinets too. But yeah, there is there is a hard spawn for it. You're right. But that was the first that I saw of this thing. 
And I was like, there's no way I'm going to get this done. And it was in the new Klimov shopping center yeah. on a pegboard in one of the shops. And I accidentally visited it just because like my scab was kind of near there one time when I was like doing the scab on streets thing. Cause I was like, Hey, I can again, this is great. And uh, I went there and it, dude, it was a freaking cemetery. It was insane. <laughs> there were like PMCs everywhere. I was like, what the hell's happened here? This was before I probably read the tweet. Cause I hadn't really like paid attention to where the thing was. And I was like, I wonder if this is, hmm. And I went to go and look at Logical's thing. And I was just like, ah, yeah, that makes sense. But there were like six dead players there. They'd all been looted, but it was like, I was like, whoa. There was like a few helmets and I'd like grabbed a few items. But uh, yeah, it was just bonkers. It was bonkers. So yeah, the, but it's not, it doesn't spawn every time. So it's a hard spawn, right? but it's not in every raid. This is the issue. So I, I don't know what the spawn rate is of the key, but it isn't 100%. Which, is that how the Skybridge key works? Is that 100% or is it just a hard spawn? Skybridge is 100%. It does okay. always spawn in the pub, yeah. And you get it every time. Okay. Yeah, because I didn't do that last swipe. Um, and this swipe I did it. Um, which I'll have to do it again for the other quest. But yeah, it's just interesting because that's like some of the, you know, some, some stuff's unique and it doesn't really follow the previous rules, much like the staircase thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just interesting. Uh, speaking of which... Chief has a video where he gets on top of the oh what is that it's across from the mall it's the old area what is that apartment complex called is it just across a, from the mall which one yeah uh, on Kilmom Street um it's like the like, first area when streets came out not uh, not Pinewood not the hotel yeah yeah Pinewood yeah that's it oh Pinewood okay yeah there's there's this built center building um. Which I guess is the, I think they might have expand. I can't remember, dude. Did they expand that part of it? Whatever. There's this building, like yeah. Well, there's this... a bunch more stuff that you can do in Pinewood now. Like you can go to the ne the next floor up and yes. in a load of the other like top areas. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the one that is kind of like in the center, um, of the whole mm -hmm. block, if you will. Yeah. There's a staircase that you can go up and it's blocked off, but you can, with enough strength, you can jump up into it. Like some people pop like stems for it, but I think Sheep's just high enough. He just has to drop like his yeah. arm or something. And then you just go up the stairs and you're like out of bounds. Like the walls aren't rendering, oh. but like the, you can go up the stairs and you get on the rooftop, dude. And the roof's like fully rendered. Well, most of it. And you can like shoot people down. You can't, so to clarify, you can't shoot people through the walls that, aren't rendered yeah but you can see through them and it's like really buggy because like half the map isn't rendered but like it's kind of crazy because he got he went like all the way up top there and threw a like <laughs> uh or shot a flare and <laughs> you know i think he died to like a sniper scav at some point <laughs> um because like you could just look across and see sniper scav on uh where would that be at um i guess Kind of like the corner of Lexos and uh, yeah, the Sewer River Street, whatever that is. Yeah, I can't remember what that one's called, but the one opposite Pinewood, maybe on the other side, like opposite Sparger Pinewood, on the corner yeah, of Lexos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. It's it's fun. It's funny, dude. But yeah, it's just. I wonder how many other staircases you can unintentionally climb. Mm. <laughs> or intentionally, you know, who knows? Yeah, I don't know. I did see one other. Bugs area, which was I can't remember where it is. It's in the new shopping center somewhere. I mean, it'll be patched at some point. But you could like crouch, backpedal your way into like it's like a tent or something. I couldn't quite figure out where it was, but it was in one of those shops. You could, like backpedal your way into it, and at some point your head like disappears through the top, and then the whole map just like just all renders. Like the culling just turns off, and the Ooh. whole map renders. It's like the the shop itself just like disappears, and the whole map renders. You could see like everything. So it's like really really weird. Like super super strange. I don't know how useful it is because like you're you know sat in a corner, but like maybe you could see people. I, I don't really know. There's like a whole bunch of these things with the culling system and you know the new yeah. area and stuff. Yeah. Huh. Pretty. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty interesting. There's um. There's a couple of other new quests. So there's one which. I mean, I'll just mention it because it's it's not really that complicated, but it gatekeeps the AVT now. So when they introduce these new quests, they put a new restriction in for the AVT. So it's still a teapot and it's still Prepple 3, but you have to do glory to the CPSU part two now, which is it's just a simple case of go to house, pick up journal, leave raid. It's not complicated. You have to do that now in order to uh, 
to continue on with that. So that one's not complicated, but it's, it's decent, and I, I enjoyed doing that one. Um, then there was there's the Gunsmith Part 25, which I said you need a PKP to do. And then there's one other. There's a couple of others. There's one which is like a really notorious one where you have to go around like finding like clock faces or something. I haven't actually done that oh. yet, so I, I'm I'm not onto that. So I don't I don't exactly know what that entails. But it's like it's some absurd quest. I don't uh, maybe I can find it in a minute while you're talking about something else on the wiki. But the one that I did was ambulances again, um, which is one that came up for me straight away as soon as I could. Yes. Um, as soon as I could get back into the game again. And this one sounds incredibly toxic. It ends mm-hmm. up not being so, but I think it might be a bug that it isn't. Okay, go on. Because it says on the quest, locate and obtain the ambulance paramedic smartphone on the streets of Tarkov in one raid. Excuse me. Which I was like, this doesn't, I don't understand what that means. Because surely if you get the smartphone and you leave, it's in one raid. So I don't really know. I don't really know what they're getting at there. Right. Turns out there's a second part to it. This is one of these other ones where a second part (laughs) appears, right? So it's not it's not just that. It's located to obtain the ambulance paramedic smartphone, but also extract from the streets of Tarkov through the vehicle extract. Now I don't know whether the intention for this was to find the smartphone and extract through the vehicle extract with the smartphone all in the same raid. I guess so. Oh, okay. In practice, it doesn't work that way. You can go and find the thing and leave. And then you can go back into another raid, and then you could use the vehicle extract and leave, and then that's it, right? It's you're you're good to go. I don't know if it resets when you die. I'm not okay. actually sure. Um, but that seems to work. And I was like, given that that's how it works, I don't want to change anything. I want to do this now before it becomes really hard because taking right. the vehicle extract on the streets is really difficult. There's an earlier yeah. quest which I hadn't done, which I still also done required that. me, yeah, which also required me to do the vehicle extract. So people use it all the time. Yeah. Plus, it's right next to Lexos, right? So it's actually one of the right. easier extracts if you kill Caban. It's not always there. There's tons yeah. of people who want to do it. And I was like, the, the crazy thing about this paramedic smartphone one, dude, I was like, I read the wiki and I misread it. I was like, oh, there's ambulances all over the streets. It was just like, oh, it'll be in like, you know, you can go to, I thought you could go to any of the ambulances and it'll just be in there. And then you Same. can take it out of the vehicle extract. I was like, okay, that, make, that kind of makes it doable. It can spawn in any ambulance. It'll just be in yeah. one of them out of all of them on the map. And then if you have to get out of the street vehicle extract as well, like imagine it's on the other side, like that's like the most RNG, ridiculous, awful quest ever, right? If it's over by Pinewood or something, there's no chance in hell that the vehicle extract is still going to be open by the time you get back. Even if it's spawned, there's just no way. Like it's already an RNG crapshoot in the first place. You basically have to spawn by the theater or like the backside of Concordia to even stand a chance of getting vehicle extract now. Like I went to go and do a vehicle extract one um, for mine, and uh, and I, I killed a guy over there anyway. Like as while I was in there, I was like I went there straight away and I waited for the seven minutes, and I like headshot somebody running across the street and killed a sniper scab and ended up being able to leave slightly early. But I was like, God, it's like it's even if you're right freaking there, dude, it's hard. <laughs> so I hope that that doesn't get changed because that would be that honestly will be really 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 hard and hard in a bad way. It's like. Not hard, but just you just have to re-roll it a million times until the ambulance across the road from Lexos has the thing, and then the vehicle extract is there, and you run out and you do both at once. Like I don't see any other way of doing it. Like maybe you get really lucky and go and check the vehicle exit, but you know it's it's kind of out of the way. If you're not in that area, it's like kind of out of the way to go and check it, and you have to walk across the street like out in the open, go and check it. It's even there or not? I don't know, man. But yeah, I, I misread it, and I was like, man, this this could be awful if it's not two separate like two separate raids it's kind of okay as one raid no no yeah i i tried doing that quest the day i came out and the wiki was like so fresh on the info it was like oh yeah this ambulance here which was like the one uh by it's next to the the sky bridge uh key spawn um kind of oh, like yeah. in the you know the first iteration streets there's an ambulance there mm. and i looked and i was like it said the the driver's seat or passenger seat. I can't remember. And I was like looking. I'm like, it's not there, dude. What am I doing wrong? I was really confused. Mm-hmm. And then I think I looked again. There was like, oh, you know, it's like one of the ambulances. And it didn't have them all marked. It's like, oh, my God, great. So it's like I have to go find ambulances. And, it, and it's not up been updated on the wiki where all the ambulances are at. So I knew there was one nearby on the in the new section across the street. So I went there and it wasn't there. I was like, okay, well. This is going to be a, a, a quest for another day, but 
<laughs> yeah, I'm I am in agreement. I hope it doesn't change or has to be done through all one because that's just like so much RNG. I do like like it kind of makes sense why they added all these ambulances now. You know, it's adding up. <laughs> yeah, because there's a lot in the new areas. Um, but yeah, I think I I think that's kind of a cool. I like that she you know got to do make use of these props once in a in the wipe. Yeah, it's not it's not too bad. The um, I found the other one. Um it was sad it reminded me that the name of it is called Out of Time. And you have okay. to have completed Ballet Lover, which I did, I think. And then you have to complete Scavenger as well. Oh my god. Which this... is the one that I haven't done because you have to do like all of Ragman's quest line. Scavenger's like the last one. It's after Gratitude, uh, which I was actually I just did gratitude. Um but now I have to like extract from interchange seven times or whatever and then get to you know level nine search or something. Once you do that, out of time, you have to locate twelve clock um what are, what are they? Clock dial paintings <laughs> or something. And there's twelve. Six of them are on streets. One of them's on customs, one on labs, one on reserve, one on shoreline, one on interchange, and one on lighthouse. And you need like, wait, Concordia thirty four. You need the labs manager room key. You need the HEP station storage, a car dealership closed section, office room, blah blah blah. And to each one has multiple spawns for each oh. clock face. Oh, thing. Giga, I'm dying. Help. So oh. I've not even started this one yet. And do you know what the worst part about all of this? They moved the Trooper 35 backpack, the really nice tan one. They moved that behind this quest. So you have to do this to get access to that. Like, that was the goated bag, right? <laughs> like, weighs less than a kilo. Oh, yeah. Because it's an attack too. Yeah. It's, uh, is that actually like, ah, oh, dude, it, I thought maybe that was a bug, but maybe that's a feature. There's feature no way now. that's right. It was part of their, we're rebalancing these bags right. so that they weigh the realistic amount because they, you know, okay. got a freaking set of scales in the BSG office or something <laughs> rather than like, why? I, I'm still confused as to that decision, but anyway. Um, but so they put that behind this quest, which I mean, I'm not necessarily against, to be honest. I'm not, I'm not actually against it, really, but you get 25,000 XP, you get a million rubles, and you can buy this thing. You get three full uh, Defender 2s. Like, it's quite, you know, it's a good, good reward. Yeah, but Giga, dude. Oh, I, like, I thought maybe you... Like, I just kind of assumed it was all on the streets, but the fact that you had to go to different maps... And labs. Oh, the inter the uh, the one on interchange. You have to get into twenty one WS, <laughs> and like, it's like the spawns change. Yeah, it's quite dude. Painful. The wiki page is like an encyclopedia. It is just this one page. Yeah, the scroll bar is just crazy. Oh my god, dude! And this may not be. I mean, I don't know whether it's completely updated yet. Maybe it is, but. I mean, I guess it's like okay because it's just essentially a collectathon. Yeah, associated with a bunch of keys. Mm -hmm. But I don't know wh whether this one is particularly <sighs> like the car dealership closed section key and the car dealership director's office room key. I don't know if those ones are like the closed section key is the one that was used in the two lines of stash quest last wipe, right? That was really sought after. I think this one. I feel does this is this own does this only drop on Caban now? Okay, yeah, this one does, yeah. And they changed it to one use. Yeah. So but... if you die with the thing, you have to find the key again. Yeah. Oh, it sells for like two million on the flea. Okay, at least you can buy it. But the stuff behind it is like I mean, you know, if it sells for two million and you think you're gonna get about two million worth, which you kinda do, like there's like bitcoins um i think i just remember bitcoins but there's like you know it seems like a pretty good key i think most people are selling it however but yeah like that's kind of the benefit right if you die with it then it's like oh now i can use it but like if you make it out then it's like oh i can sell it yeah well i meant that like if you try and do this quest and you open the section and you get the clock and then you die right yeah yeah of course, you guys yeah. get another freaking key, but like, yeah, at least you can buy it on the fleet, so maybe it's not too bad. Uh, I mean, I but. don't anticipate me doing this quest. I gotta be honest, dude. That just it's a lot of work, man. That is a lot of work. You get a cool mill, 
Yeah, but it, it's just a lot of it's a it's a long commitment, man. It is a lot of work, yeah. <sighs> like the Lexus key is one issue. Um, labs is like another issue. Object twenty one is like it's worth doing if you play interchange a lot, but like I don't really want to be. You know, I don't want to do this one time just to get some. You know what I mean? I just. It's twenty one WS. Is that the container? Oh, one? that's the container one. Okay, that one's still. You can craft it. It's still pretty expensive, but not as expensive as the SR eleven. I think it's called. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is. So this isn't the safe room. Close the door yeah. key. With the swipe the toilet. This is like killers. What do they call it? Like killers uh, container or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, never mind. You do have to go inside the SR11. There's a wait. Hold on. Why would you have to go in SR11? Um, there is a chance. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh my god, it gets better. Where's wait, the, so I, it's either Kibber or 11SR or Kib 21WS. Yeah. <laughs> it's in I, any of those locations? Yeah. Oh my god. Okay, well maybe reading the like requirements isn't doesn't actually do it fully justice. Like what is, what else, what else is it? Rogue building one, two oh yeah, so uh, oh my god. So paint yeah, painting twelve could be in either of the three buildings on three spawns on each building. So it could be in nine different places. Painting eleven could be in the Kibber Arms eleven SR or twenty one WS. Seems like Shoreline is always in the Power stations, mm -hmm. that's not a bit no big deal. Reserve is always Black Bishop. Painting eight is always manager's office. Manager's office is usually relatively cheap. But well, probably not anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but usually. Customs is always Fortress, Stronghold. Um the rest of them don't seem to yeah, like streets is like Concordia 34 is kind of whatever. Yes, it's the Lexus one that's like kind of problematic, but yeah, I guess she could just like re-roll to get uh, S21. Would probably be the move. You just buy oh, that wait. one key and just keep hitting that. Because no one, I mean, now people are going to go there probably. Everyone's going to be doing this strategy, but assuming the people that are doing this quiz, I, mm. I'm not, dude. Uh, there ain't no shot. I will use my mechanism backpack or some, <laughs> you know, whatever. Dude. Just F that, man. Uh, we'll see. Um, I have a bit of a topic that wasn't plans. I don't know if you saw. Did you see Jesse's weight video? I guess we'll call it. When was this? Um, I think like he recent? posted it yesterday. Yeah. No, I haven't. Um, so he has a video. Maybe I'll pull it up here. I wonder why YouTube didn't show it to me. I was like trying to look for talk of stuff, and it just like hasn't shown it to me. Um, good question. It could just be product of your uh, searching habits, or your YouTube habits. Yeah. Mm. So, um, yeah, the title is Tarkov's weight system hurts the wrong people, but we can fix it. And uh, it's basically his like feedback on the weight system, which you know, kind of the two the two main points were like. This is a looter game. Uh, you know, why are we getting punished for looting? And kind of like his solution approach, you know, his, his critiques was basically like, you can, which, I mean, you know, fair critiques in my opinion, and I, and I feel like this is kind of a product of the feedback people were providing, but anyways, getting onto it, you know, you can essentially negate the weight system through the use of stems, right? You get the mule. Yeah. I didn't even know this, but you can like stack mule, SJ6, and trim it all. Like SJ6 and mule, I'm aware of, but not trim it all. And you can literally, like, there's a segment in here where his character is like level 20 something. And he just sprints the entire length of shoreline, practically speaking. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he spawned at like uh, the blue fence on shoreline. And his stamina bar does not move it's just full and he sprints the entire length down the road all the way to tunnel which is like to me is kind of bonkers <laughs> i mean i didn't really like i wasn't aware you could do that i guess 
I guess your weight, you're like you're at the lowest weight threshold. You know, because he got he's got gear on, but the mule takes you like at the minimum weight, so you're like zero penalties, mm -hmm. plus the SJ six, plus whatever the tremolo is, which I guess is like strength and endurance. I don't even know. I think tremolo gives you more uh, stamina recovery as well. That's the deal. That's why it's so powerful because the tremolo gives you plus three stamina. So it's like a SJ six and a half. It's yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you can't. That's it. So basically. You're gaining stamina where you can't gain it. Like, you can't lose it, essentially. You're above that threshold. Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I think that's a fair critique. Like, it just doesn't like, it's like, why even have, arguably, why even have the weight system when it's just like, you can just negate it rubles. Like, yeah, there's some, like, trade-offs, like, you gotta spend the money, and you know the mule makes you lose HP, you get these debuffs, but it, it, I don't. It just kind of doesn't make sense. Like I think, because I think what happened in my mind, anyways, is like the weight system came out. People are like, "Ew, this is gross," and BSG is like, "Okay, we'll fix it through the use of like we'll address it." Sorry, we'll address it through the use of stems. There now you can like, you know, at a cost of something, you can circumvent the mechanic or you know deal with the mechanic or whatever. But mm -hmm. it's just kind of silly because it's like. You know, you get we got the injectors case now, so it's like I'm always going to carry. Like honestly, prior to that lighthouse raid with the PKM I described, I had just turned in the therapist quest not too long ago to get the uh, what you call yeah. it, the the injector case, and I wasn't I you know wasn't gonna do that, but I just figured like it's let me just do this just to have it because the value of the injector case is well worth it, and you can have all these sims in there. And yeah, it paid for itself. Like I got out with most of that gear, which was like really great. But I mean, when I was like over eighty, like I was probably in the ninety, maybe a hundred kilograms. I don't know. Like I literally could not move. And like once I popped it, I could like barely move. Pretty much what speed this video is going to show is like what I was at. Like I had, I could like sprint, but it was like very rough. Probably had like five or six dots on my stamina yeah. bar, but. It's just like, like I get, I get that, um, critique of it. It's like, why? Because it's kind of weird. It's like, once you get into the red zone, it's like you you practically can't move. Like you can move, right? And I would I would wonder if like prone crawling would be faster than trying to walk at that like over encumbered state. I think so. But it's it's like I guess it's the ways the the game's way of telling you like hey you are not allowed to take this much stuff you know it's like you can effectively put it on you know what i mean but you can't really yeah. do anything with it um i guess like some i guess you could like some people have taken tank batteries out like i would just i just can't ever justify that you know what i mean i've done some serious slow crawling out of maps in my time i've i've, oh, done, I've done some how it's just like the time it takes you know i just i, I don't know i know i realized i was being too stingy with the stems and not using them enough so i'm using them like anytime i get you know it's like starts to become an issue like if, I, if i'm just like you know heavy overweight and it makes it hard to fight then like that's fine i can just drop the bag yes so yeah anytime i'm like war when i'm walking and the stem's going down like it's mule time you know like yeah we just need to leave the raid that's kind of where i've got to at this point and it's like yeah it's 120k but you know so what it's even like, if it's you... like 200k it's like mm -hmm. and it's like you may not you may even like break even using the mule but it's like in your mind it's like a win you yeah. know what i mean like you like i don't know it's you don't need that many items to make 200k's worth of value like yeah you don't it's not but like it's... that but yeah go ahead yeah yeah like i haven't watched the video but I feel like you could make that. I mean, I don't know what what's what's Jesse's like. Has he got a proposal? Because like to me, I feel like that's kind of just like part of the progression of the game in some ways, right? It's like mm -hmm. you start off or you don't prepare, and like you you try to take out seventy kilos and you just can't. But if you're prepared and ready, and you've invested in the injector case and stuff, and invested in the right stims, then like yeah, then you now can take it out, and that's like part of like becoming more powerful in in the game. You know, it'd be like I don't know space game where you you know you, you mine some rare resource but you can only carry like 10 out of 100 of it or whatever it's just like well you know that if you progress further and you get the bigger ship then you can now mine more stuff i feel like it's sort of similar it's just like a progression mechanic as far as i see it i don't think it's anything 
too bad like that. Like being able to, like, I, I just feel like wording it like, oh, yeah, we can just like bypass this mechanic by using game the game's features. Well, what about like bypassing the game's mechanics of bullets by having better armor? What about bypassing the game's mechanics of like people of hearing by buying better headsets? Like it's all kind of the same thing to me. I don't know. I'm not sure if I really see the, the argument. Kind of. I mean, I kind of see what you're saying. I, I do agree. I just I think it maybe it's, you know, in this case, it is a bit more of a leap because you practically go from like zero to a hundred. You know what I mean? It's like you can take the stuff out and then suddenly you can't once you get over the certain it's, level. Exactly. Like it's like, you know, with the armors, you're kind of like incrementally increasing what you're negating if you will whereas like essentially as soon as you have the capacity to run an director case plus the stems you weight's a non-issue practically like in most cases i don't think maybe if you brought in uh you know a mashka um zabralo pkm and you killed two other guys who also had the same loadout and you try to take other stuff like maybe then you couldn't make that work you know, but like it's very niche. Otherwise, you can practically anyone's two player kits plus your own, mm. you can just take out, right? Whereas prior, it's just like your only option is to play the game an insane amount to level up slowly to the progression, your strength and endurance to be able to take their stuff out. You, you yeah, and even there, I mean? it's been nerfed so that, like, you know, the backpack still weighs and whatever. It's just the guns now, so it's like nowhere near as powerful as it was before. Yeah, I know, I know what you mean. I don't. To me, I don't know. The, the argument, actually, the strongest argument against it that I can see is that it just means that you know, when you get a win, you basically just have to leave the raid straight away. That's like the strongest argument for me because otherwise, I just feel like you know, it's kind of a decision making thing. You know, it's like, do I want to leave now? Like, am I going to use the mule and get out and just and just leave or not? Because like. If you're, I don't know, you could just like stay. It depends what you've got and depends what you want to do. Because you could just stay in and drop some of the stuff. That's kind of where some of the decision making comes in. Or you go like, okay, no, I'm just, we're on our way out here. So I'm just going to, you know, bypass the mechanics and spend the money with the preparation that I did to like leave. So I can leave in a sensible way. I don't think it's necessarily, I don't. It's just like, it drives people to leave the raid because of the weight system in general. But that's not necessarily the fault of the stims. That's just like the weight system. There's just there's a way to do it. Like if this didn't exist, people would just not be able to take everything and then and then leave. You'd have to drop stuff until you were just under the red threshold, so you could still walk with stamina recovery or whatever. But I don't like what what exactly is the issue? Like what what's the what's the what's the problem? Well, I'm not sure if I understand your point there. You're saying, yeah, if I think I understand, you're saying that the weight system is there to basically incentivize you to take less loot like you should just make a choice to get out essentially it's like it's well it, it's making you make choices right so rather than just being able to take whatever you like yeah you know it's for sure. forcing you to make choices so it's like do i take some of the stuff and carry on do i take all of the do stuff I take this added risk. Sims and leave yeah do i take the added risk because now i'm heavier and my ergo's lower because I'm, I'm heavier i have to right. drop my bag if i get into a fight like all of the all of those layers it's like and, and those layers i think is what makes it an interesting decision um, but that's why I said, I think from my perspective, the, the strongest criticism you could make of it, not that I'm necessarily making it myself, but the strongest criticism you could make of it is that just the weight system in general means that you have a good fight, you're overweight now, you just leave and reset. That's probably the strongest criticism. But, uh, and I yeah. know a lot of the Chad guys do make that complaint. It's a bit similar to Finding Raid in some ways, um, just simply because it's like, yeah, people are just incentivized to leave after one fight because you can only carry your kit and someone else's kit and then you just have to go. Like, I was I was uber overweight the other day because I was just on the threshold. I had, like, the Gari rig and, like, a heavy gun and stuff. I, like, picked up this guy's equipment and I was, like, in the... Like, it was just crazy. I was, like, 55 kilos. And I was like, why am I so heavy? And people were like, well, oh, you got the Bagari on, that's, like, 13k, and then you got the two guns and they're, like, you know, 10 together. I was just like, yeah, I can't, I can't, it kind of makes sense. Um... Because you are incentivized to come in quite light, actually. It's one of the reasons why I don't use the Bugari that much. I picked one up, yeah. and that's why I was using it, because I don't normally barter for it, because it's just such a hefty beast. I like being under the threshold by like you know, a bit of a, a margin, if I can. Um, not that you get that much choice early when you're trying to move into Class 5, because they're all usually pretty heavy. But I just, uh, yeah, I just don't really see much of an issue. Like I don't, I don't see how you square that circle of people not leaving. But like I, don't re I personally don't care about people bypassing the mechanics in air quotes by 
spending money, making decisions about whether they should go or not, and when to make those decisions. I, I, don't, I don't think that's bad, personally. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of stuck on this one point, which, I mean, I kind of agree, but, like, I feel like, for me personally, there really is no decision. It's just, like, the default thing you do. Like, oh, I killed a guy, I want to take his stuff, I'm overweight, now I pop the stems and leave. I buy more stems, reset the process, you know what I mean? Like, it's just... Yeah, I guess it's the threshold, like, no, like if I kill one guy and I'm near the extract, then... I yeah, there's kind of no point. Take the stim, right? You know, like it depends on how overweight. I normally only take them when I'm like super overweight. Maybe I should take them more often. I don't know, but like I'm still, I mean, I'm getting into that that zone anyway. But uh, even still, like I don't always use them. Like normally, my my whatever I've looted normally isn't that heavy. Um, typically, so if I'm just yeah, forty five kilos and like going kind of slow, like I usually won't use them then. Yeah, forty five is a little to walk out too close. So there's like there's a threshold and you have to make a decision and like is it worth the value and that's kind of thing. I don't feel like it's necessarily an auto. It's not like every raid I'm leaving, I'm using Mule SG6. Yeah, no. So I feel raid. like there's still a threshold that you have to decide. But like that's my, but like what's the, the I mean, yes, you're deciding am I gonna use the stim or not? But I guess what I'm saying is like you know, when I'm presented with the opportunity to take out loot that I can't take out it's not a decision if I'm going to use a stem or not. Do you know what I mean? At that point, yeah. But that's kind of like, that's the that's sort of the extreme end of the argument, you know what I mean? Like, the, the decisions are more interesting in that sort of middle section of like, I'm at 53, do I use the stem or do I just like drop this gun that's not very high value? Like, yeah, if you're at like 80 kilos, it's just the default. You just auto use the, the stems. Like, that's just the way it is. But um, that's kind of the same as if you found... Yeah, a quest item or something that can't go in secure or whatever. Like you, there's the, not not. I don't feel like every decision needs to be like nuanced or whatever. Like it's a like if you weren't if you got to the end of the raid and you weren't underweight, so you weren't overweight, then you would never use the stims. That's also the default option. But I think yes. there's it's because it's a spectrum. Um, in that situation, yes, you always use them. But I don't because you're not always in that situation. I right. feel like it's okay. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, the, I mean, the only other thing I would say is, like, the decision is typically, like, is it worth to use this stem? Mm. In which case, it's just, like, a money question, you know? It's not really... I mean, I guess I guess there's a little bit of risk involved. Whatever. I'm, yeah, I'm like getting it's a bit more than that. It's like, you know, how far am I from the extract? Like, uh, you know, can I just go there without using it? Like, am I going to get shot well, on like, the way? I mean, I know if... my health's going down. Do I have to use Propitol now as well? Like, do I want to do that? Or should I just not bother? And... Yeah, I, okay. There's, there's a, sure. The, the main, the other points were, uh, you know, it like disproportionately, the way it disproportionately affects low level players. Which I agree, yeah. like it's really shitty playing the start of wipe and you're just like instantly overweight. <laughs> like I think that's kind of shit. And they have no stims. Yes. Um, but even stims aside, I just think it's kind of like really punishing. Like, I don't know. I, I wish the weight worked differently where like you got bonuses if you were lighter. You know what I mean? But like, I mean, you, you basically just don't get penalized, but whatever mm. that, that that could cause a lot of different issues yeah there's not enough of a of a scale there i think you know going from right. zero to you know 28 or something it doesn't it's make like any the, difference to your yes. character yeah yeah it's very thresholdy which we've critiqued before um which i don't think that was particularly in this critique um but that is one critique that i have i don't mm -hmm. like how thresholdy it is and i'm not even positive on the threshold mechanics like if you go from you, you know white to yellow what instant debuffs do you get same for like yellow to red i'm not quite sure because i think it scales within those colors but I think so. it like starts and stops based at, at, at thresholds i i don't know um i i think that's the main gist of it as far as i could recall I'm probably missing something so does his he say like his conclusion like what does he actually want them to do yes so his conclusion is he wants to like increase the 
start like the thresholds to like 35 go i think it's like 26 or 28 it's at right now so just like scale it up to like 35 and then it's like okay fine you're gonna take fall damage um you know fine you're gonna like reduce jump high like those are fine uh but let's not change the movement speed so basically we're saying from 35 to 50 we're not gonna change movement speed we are gonna gain stamina when walking no ergo penalties and consume stam faster. You consume stamina faster and perhaps you can start, uh, consume hydration energy faster, which I kind of like the hydration energy idea. Mm. I think that kind of like fits within the, you know, immersion aspect of the game. Like I'm using more of my body's character's energy and stuff to, to take the stuff out. That kind of makes sense to me. Yeah, I like that one. Um, and again, like his kind of main argument, I would say is like, uh, you know, it's a looting game, which I mean, you know, I like, he says that he likes the weight system and like, it should like, you know, realism isn't fun. Immersion is, you know, whatever. I'm not going to get into the weeds there. There's all the weeds, but like, I kind of agree. Like immersion probably should be the aim because of all the stuff. That isn't realistic that's in the game, and I think immersion's really the value there. But so, anyways, moving on, 50 to 65, you get a 15% speed reduction, and you have slower actions, like unlocking doors and, you know, reload. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Apparently, this is in the game already. Like, eating is slower when you're overweight. I don't know. <laughs> something like this. I was not aware. Um, and then 65 to 75 plus, uh, your ankles... Wait, no, that can't be right. 40% speed reduction, uh, massive ergo hit, uh, you're just constantly losing the stamina, you know, it's like hell, hell on earth, I guess. So, essentially, it's kind of just, like, keeping the framework, but, like, scaling everything up, which I, I guess would be okay, because, you know, I think, when you think about the newer players starting out, you know, you kill a guy, you want to loot his stuff, and then, like, you're gonna be giga punished if you try to, like, take too much, like, you're presumably close to being overweight already going in, and you're like, as soon as you loot a few items, you're gonna be overweight, then now you manage to kill this guy, and now you're gonna be even more overweight. It's just like, it just feels really bad, I think, and I I don't know. I would like to see the whole thresholds be worked, like, instead of it being, like, the, the bar is, like, zero to infinity, and as you move up to infinity, you know, it just, like, the debuffs scale, you know, it's just all yeah. very, uh, perhaps not linear, but you know, it, it scales in some way, but I, I don't know. I'm still like kind of not a fan of this whole, like it's a looter game. Therefore why punish the looting aspect? I, I kind of don't mind. Like, I don't really mind the weight system. I just think that the way it's implemented now, it just feels like it has flaws in terms of like choosing your gear to be under these thresholds and then you factor in the skills and then once you get max mm -hmm. perks these perks just like completely ramp up your power increase and then the stems are like it's it's almost a question of like for me this is how i'm thinking about it when i get in these situations where i do want to use the stems and like i'm always able and going to carry them um you know presumably it's like why even have why even have the these penalties exist? Do you know what I mean? In yeah. my mind, at least, because like I'm I'm if if I'm ever gonna be in that scenario where I'm at within the progression of the game, you know, I've reached the I've got. Let's say you get flea. That's probably like a good starting point. You can scab. You can make enough money, whatever, and then buy the buy the stuff. And then now, anytime you're in that position where you're going to take out that much loot to be that overweight, I'm going to use it. And I'm, you know, most likely I'm going to do the math to make sure it's like moderately paying for itself, you know, at least. And if not, just drop the stuff and then don't use it. It just feels so, I don't know. Like, I, I almost wish that this, the meal wasn't in the game and it just like scaled better i suppose perhaps perhaps i don't know like 
you know the, the systems being there are the, what drives you to bring the the items in the first place though like you could i could play devil's advocate and say mm-hmm. what's the point of limbs getting blacked out why don't they just go on one because everyone carries a cms so there's no point in having the black limb system yeah like what's the point of that or having a break because everyone carries a splint you know it's like i don't know the fact that those features exist is why everyone carries one in the first place and it's like the, the only other thing that I would, I guess, that I would say about it to sort of come back onto your side is that, well, like, where's actually the, where's the problem here? I think, more mm-hmm. fundamentally, I think the problem might be the Stims case itself because yes, the medical system I forces agree. you to bring things with you in your secure, right? And there's a limited amount of space. You have to decide what to take. The Stims case used to be four by four, which was absolutely insane. Now it's three <laughs> by three. I still think it's too big. Like, if the Stims case was two by two, you'd have to think about what you took, and you wouldn't be able to bring everything that you wanted. Oh, I want a heavy bleed thing, and a he- the quick heal, and a mule, and an SG6. Okay, but now I can't bring anything else. I can't bring any other, like, I can't bring an extra propital or an adrenaline. I can't bring, um, like, what, what else do people bring in there? I can't bring that SJ12 in case I run out of food. Like, I have to think about, like, what I want to bring then. You know, it's, like, two by two would be enough to, everybody would want one still, and like, yeah, maybe people would bring two, but then that's like, that's on you, right? Uh, maybe, maybe that would just be the new meta, having two. But I, I think two by two, honestly, would be better. I know people would like, people would complain out the ass about that if they changed it. But I think the game would be better off, honestly. Like, that, I think the Stims case being so big means you don't have to make any uh, choice about what to bring with you at all. Yeah, I mean, two by two would definitely be a pretty good nerve. At that point, people probably would, there might be a, case to bring two i don't know if that's gonna like i'm like i'm gonna assume eod gamma containers Mm -hmm. um actually that would mean you have to you'd have to cut something so that probably honestly that probably be a good start for a nerf to bring it into line because like not only are you cutting your stems that you're bringing but now if you're gonna bring two to sort of make up for that conversation you have to cut something else in your container like two stem cases I personally would just like it to be like, I don't care how big the stem case is, just like lock it outside of the container and make it like super cheap. Like I would be way more for that, but that's, that's a whole another can of worms. Mm. Um, how it's like its own sloth or something. Uh, I, I guess you could do that. Um, is that what you mean? Well, you mean not, you're I mean, not allowed you, to put it in the container? Yeah. Like you just can't put it in the container. Oh, I see. But it's like 10 K. Yeah, something like this. You know, it's maybe it's a oh. maybe it's a teapot barter or something. You know, I don't know. Um, That's kind of intriguing. Yeah, I would like that because then you could you know loot it from like it would be, you know it's like so shitty the fact that I just have like a million worth of rubles in my case permanently and you know sorry bro sorry little bro you aren't you aren't at my level you know I have like this power spike that Timmy doesn't have and then he kills me but he can't get it at all you know what i mean like he can't yeah he can't even take my gear if he wanted to <laughs> but i you know i don't know that's just that's a separate thing i kind of know what you mean yeah that is separate i would really need to think about that because that changes a lot but uh yeah. but i do see what you mean you know it's just like oh, i have this just war chest of things to deal with almost any situation you have right. i'm it's... covered like running out of food i'm covered painkillers I'm, I'm covered health i'm covered you know it's just like weight you know it's like, yeah, it's not stamina. I mean, if you, if you loot a meal stem, that's just like free. It's just like insta profit. Cause like, who, you know, if you die, it's like, whatever, I'll just use that next in my mm-hmm. next raid with it. You know, it's just, it's insane. I think, I, I think the stem case in the container is a little too busted. But, anyways, I, I see your points. Um, yeah, it's, and I think it's good that, like, I mean, it's just kind of weird. Like, you, you loot. You can loot stuff and then not move. I guess that's good. Like, it's informing you you need to drop stuff. I don't know, man. It's, it's a tough one. But I think you're right that the stems case is kind of the problem. It's, like, one problem, and I think the weight threshold is another problem. I think those are the two, the two things I would change if I was the, mm. you know, game dev arm, armchair guy. Yeah, I'm not sure about the actual thresholds themselves. I think like the you know the smoothing of them is the way. I mean, like just pushing the thresholds up, like eh, maybe. Um, I'm not, I actually don't really feel too strongly either which way. But yeah, I think like 
the lack of like I, I think you can have busted stuff but i think you have to make a choice about it and that's the thing about the stims cases you don't have to make any decisions there you don't have to make any choices you don't have to risk anything that's kind of what Tarkov is about. It's just like, yeah. I can bring all of this stuff and I don't have to risk any of it. Um, it's, it's sort of a bit of anti-Tarkov. I was just like looking at the wiki and it's like overweight. It says here I triggered at PMC 26 and then a critical at 67, but obviously those thresholds move up as you get higher strength. Right. And it's like you make more noise, reduce jump height, stamina drain increase, fall damage increase, movement speed decrease, walking drains your stamina. And then critical is like cannot sprint, max height stance reduced. Or can you not even stand up fully with critical? That's funny. I didn't. I didn't know that. Prone movement drains stamina. Stance blocks stamina regain. It's kind of intriguing. I know it also changes your ergo on your gun as well. Yeah. Um, I don't know exactly to what extent, but I know that it does. Maybe that's worth doing some testing on. I think uh, it feels yeah, pretty I massive. I mean, it feels bad when you're like 50k yeah. even, and you're like <clears throat> even on decent guns. But with the with the backpack drop, it's not too bad. But um. Oh no! Yeah, interesting. Uh, yeah, I don't know. There's lots of there's lots of things to it. Oops. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I would I would just like I think it reminds me a little bit of Dark and Darker, which you know it doesn't not really the same thing, but kind of it's like you have you know a similar system because like in Dark and Darker you have these classes, and if you're rogue you can like unlock doors faster. But like, what if for example, you know we had the weight scale to like these attributes we'll say and so like if you were a pistoling let's say your actions were like really fast you know like maybe you got like a reload bonus you know etc you could like open doors faster use stuff faster you know you've like you know sonic the hedgehog around the map you know you know what i mean with, actual you know. john wick meta yeah yeah and then like you know as you scale up it's like more normal and then you know once you get higher you start getting like negative I mean, you know, defense, but it's like a multiplier. It's not like a flat threshold. And I think that'd be interesting because I would really, I'd be really into building like light kits and stuff, which right now it's mainly just a, a means to level endurance, you know, like to be underweight yeah. so you can level endurance. And anyways. Yeah. I feel like you would, you'd want more of a bonus for, and maybe to maybe to like a certain extent, maybe it doesn't go like maybe it doesn't scale all the way back to zero because you don't you don't really want to like disincentivize people not wearing any gear. I can already feel it, you know, just like what's the point of a game with gear progression when you're incentivizing people not to wear any gear? Re BSG yeah, fixed that. You gotta be careful. So you kind of want to go like zero to like fifteen, all being the same. So something like that, but like it's quite a but something it's quite like a decent, that, yeah. but it's quite a decent bonus. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, you I just, wear, I but like, really you, you don't, have to wear, you I, have to have like no bag or whatever. Well, I really don't like thresh, thresholds because then it's going to be like, what, you know, drag but one it's bullet like, it's out. It's like this and then this, you know? It's like, it'll be like, if you go over it, it's just like a little bit. It starts to slope down. See what I mean? So it's like, here's the speed. Here's your speed of your character. Zero, zero, it's here. 15 kilos, it's here. And then it starts to slope down to 25. Yeah. And then it's like maybe flat for a bit and then it goes down, whatever. Like, so then it's like it's thresholdy, but it's not just like, yeah, one bullet over and you're at like 75% speed. I get you, you. It's not that like, impacted heavily by going over under the threshold. Exactly. The, the threshold is minimal. just marks the, the speedness okay. as opposed to like, like a step change. Yeah. The only thing with that is, you know, uh, it, it, it just depends. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I get that. Cause, cause, like, I like it, on one hand, I really want to incentivize. I would want to incentivize people to kit, you know, think properly about the things without like cheesing. Like, I don't like mm. as much as I'm a cheeser. I don't actually like cheesing, you know. So no, I just exactly. be worried like, about either side. E either way you look at it, cheesing is just one of those things you gotta like think about really hard. And it's hard to think about that stuff without trying it, you know. Mm -hmm. You never know. Yeah. Emergent player behavior, behavior. New meta. It is odd sometimes. Pistol, no receiver, no iron <laughs> sights, underweight, bonus. <laughs> no armor. One one frame ADS. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, like instant reload. It's like COD 
<laughs> yeah, you take the M4, it's like the 10 round mag, the, you know, no stock on it. It's just the buffer tube, and the guy's just like insta ADS. <laughs> he can just like insta lean, like one frame leans, you know, it'd be funny, dude. Oh, it looks like Battle Bit during yeah. the trial playing. <laughs> But I would really like. I'd, I'd be curious if the realism on has anything like that. At the mm. see, I'd be curious to do something. Anyways, that was just a topic that I had come about since you were talking about backpacks and such. Oh, it's interesting. It is interesting. I, I, yeah, I'm not. I'm not super against it how it is now, but yeah. Food for thought. Food for thought. I don't know. Was there anything else? Like, uh, it, there's like a couple of other things, but I don't know whether I should just like roll them into next time. Like, it's not nothing pressing. Um, um, I mean, Tarkov related. I don't think I really have anything else personally. Maybe we can maybe we can fit one more thing in. Maybe we can fit one more thing. Let's talk about. Hmm. Let's talk, yeah. Let's talk. Let's talk a little bit about presets. I did like I've I was, I've been using the MTX a bit, but I'm gonna make a video on it. It's like you know, it's been kind of fun, but like we kind of know about that. Like I I do want to talk a little bit about presets. I'm not quite done with it yet but i've almost written myself out like a little list of things because okay i made that i made that video about the preset system about how we need to be using it in a different way and i am like guilty of not still not using it properly <laughs> so i need to actually set it up right it's just like do as i say not as i do and uh i've been trying to formalize the process to actually make it work because it's a little bit awkward having to you know try to build the stuff in the right order and i find myself doing things in the wrong way and like having to set set different things up in different ways and whatever so i've like come up with this little like script almost that i have to like run through to make it work okay so the first the first one is the and i'm actually now labeling the presets with the numbers so that i make sure i do it in the right order so i've got like okay the docs case for the map so i'm gonna choose so i choose a map first i've got like whatever i need to do quests or whatever and i've got like a gun in mind so then i i have to pick the docs case for the map that'll bring all the keys in and money if that if it's a car extract map and then you move the docs case out then the next one is you pick the magazines for the gun. So <laughs> if you've got, uh, you know, like half stacked stuff, like, so I've been using the M6. So actually, we could use that as an example for this. So okay. I'm going to so I'm going to customs. I make the docs case for customs. I just click go. It puts all the keys in and the money. I move that out. Oh, you actually don't even need to move it out to be fair. And then pick the magazines for the gun preset, which is just a bank robber rig. And it's got three mags in there, half CBJ at the top and half M62 at the bottom. And then two stacks of the ammo as well next to it in the bank robber. Then I pick the consumables um, preset. All that is is a CSA rig, and it's important to have it as a different rig so it doesn't utilize the rig from the mags, if you see what I mean. So I just have a bank robber and a CSA just floating around to, just for the purposes of like canning stuff up. Okay. So I use a CSA rig with like car kit, two cap tourniquets in it, an adrenaline, um, a grenade, and a right. max energy. And sorry, why do you like, use a CSA rig in particular? It can be anything. It doesn't really matter. But okay. I wanted something with a little bit more space. Um, but that wasn't the bank robber. Because if you use the bank robber, it'll use the bank robber that, from the mags. Oh, again, that makes if sense. If it's your only one, yes, it'll kick yes. all the mags out and the ammo into your stash, which you don't really want. And then, then you pull that out, and then you pick the like this, you know, whatever gamma loadout you want. I've just got like one at the moment, which is like standard gamma, and that fits in my injector case, like a spare med, a splint, um. And one other thing, I think I can't, I'm, I can't remember. And then from from there, basically, I just like pick like my helmet, my armor, because I do most of it manually, right? I just like pick my helmet, my armor, my ears using the little drop downs, because mm -hmm. it depends on what I've got. Like, I don't want to make a full preset for a whole loadout, because like, it's just one of the biggest failings of the preset system, in my experience, is not being able to set stuff unless you have the item and not being able to set multiple of the same thing. Like I would love to be able to say any grenade of these types, bring any mm. RGD, F1, yeah, Vogue of the two yeah. types, either of those is fine. Helmets, I want either TC2001, 2002, ULAC, ACHC of either color. Like, you know, I, I just don't really care. I just want to use one of them. So anyway, anyway, at the minute, I'm doing it like, I'm just doing it, most of it like manually with the drop downs because those are the bits that are easy. So you just go, yeah. Pick a rig, pick an armor, whatever it is, because with the armored rigs, you then don't need a normal rig, so it depends on whether you... It's like, it's, it gets so complicated. <laughs> You've already got a gun, so then you just stick the gun in, move the mags over that you had built already, move the docks case into your container, and, um, and then move all the consumables over and just do the hotkeys. So it's kind of a funny hybrid. Um, I know there's a bunch of people in chat saying that uh, 
I'm just way faster manually. But I just, I don't like, especially if you're stacking ammo, I don't think it is. But I'm, what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to force myself to use it this way. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, like when you're not used to it, it's slower, obviously. And you have to build certain elements that you use multiple times for the first time. But it's one of those things, like if you invest in. Why don't you do the work initially? The technology, yeah, you do the work. I think it's like an investment, right? It's like, yeah, it's like doing that every time. Like it takes forever, and like I always like, and I forget something. I forget like, oh, I'm going to woods, and I haven't bought any cash for the car. Like mm-hmm. basically, doing these things will f- stop me from forgetting to bring. Like if I want to train immunity, for example, you may not want to, so don't include it if you don't want to. It'll f- stop me from forgetting to bring a max energy every raid. It'll stop me from forgetting to bring red rebel and paracord to reserve. It'll stop me from forgetting to bring cash for the car on customs. It'll, you know, make sure that I'm always covered. If I've like all my my injector case is always full of all the stims that I actually use. Because like if I use a mule and then I get sidetracked and I right. hand in a bunch of quests, I do a scaver and I come back and then I run into the next raid and I get 90 kilos overweight and then I go in my <laughs> injector case and up oh, there's three six and the mule's missing. Like, like we've we've all done it, right? It's yeah. um it's just crazy. So I think it's going to be good, but I'm still like halfway through and I'm, I'm still sort of like trying to use it, but I'm trying to systematize it in a way that makes it easy to use, you know? So like you open up the presets and like they'll be, then the steps are numbered like one through, through four so that you go, okay, well, I pick one of the number ones and then I pick one of the number twos and then one of the number threes, and one of the number fours. And all I need to do in my stash is just have a, a bank robber and a CSA floating around. And those things are kind of my like loaders, if you know what I mean. I just yeah, then transfer yeah. the stuff out of that into my kit. And I think especially for... Um, setting up ammo presets i think it's good like if you don't need if you if you're not using ammo presets it's a probably of you know lower value because you're just loading all 5501 into every mag or something but it still stops you having to buy three bags or right click right click there right click there and put that in and uh, there's like a lot of stuff that stops you from having to do and just the fact you can buy everything all in one go would be kind of cool I'm, I'm sure there's some other things you could do like if you just need a bunch of like stuff in general you could probably just set up some stupid preset which is just a bag and then like a load of crap and you just go like buy everything and it just buys it all from the flea instantly. I'm sure there's going to be some useful things like that maybe. Um, I don't know what exactly yet. Oh, you could do that. I know what you could do. You could do that like when you open the game, you've got like your I buy these things on Trader Reset kits. Yeah, you know? that's true. So you buy all the ammo that you need, like FMJ, 55A1, you know, CBJ for the MCX. You've got all of those in the right quantities stacked up in a bag. And then you just go purchase everything and then you just shove it all in an ammo case. There's like there's stuff like that. There's definitely stuff like yeah, that that I think I just, is gonna be useful uh, for. I just think that was not the intended design of the no, it wasn't. But this is the way that it works, right? Yeah, um, it's just it would have been nice if it worked the other way. <laughs> for me personally. Yeah. Like it just it needs to be more wild cardy. Wild cardy. Like, like use any class five armor. Any class five like chest armor or something. Um, I don't know how that would work for buying stuff, but maybe right. you have to pick. I don't, I, don't, I don't. This is the thing. It's like it gets complicated. But the it problem does. for me is that like I use stuff in my stash. I don't always have the same armors in my stash. As soon as I don't have the same armor, the preset is useless because then it wants to buy it from the flame. If you can't, and then you have to dick about trying to do the barter and like give, then you have to buy diaries. Like it's it's such a pain in the ass. Right. You know. It, like, <laughs> yeah. It almost feels counterintuitive to. The essence of Tarkov, one could say. A little bit, yeah. Mm, yeah Whereas just... this way, this way it's, you know, setting up stuff that you're like, you're using every time. It's always the same, but you're mixing and matching different stuff so you don't forget. Like, trying to like, let's put it this way. Packing keys into docs cases is so annoying that people buy like eight. Yeah. I mean, I, I for do example, that as well. For right? example, yeah, yeah. Like people buy one for every map because it's such a pain in the ass. So that's kind of like one, one thing about it. Um, and like, yeah, I, like, especially maybe it's less problematic when you're not streaming, when you're streaming, talking to chat and like trying to put your loadout together at the same time, and like you get pulled away. People, oh, what's that build? And what's the ego on this thing? And I'm in the preset right. screen and I come out and I don't bring a grenade. And like, it happens all the time. I always forget stuff. I'm constantly forgetting things. Like, oh, why don't you use the car extract? Yeah, I didn't bring any cash because I'm a doofus. You know, it's just like, it's just always, always for me. Maybe it's a me issue. I don't know. But this is me solving that problem. No, I mean, I think it happens to everyone. Maybe, you know, more... Some people it happens more than others, but yeah, it's, I don't know, man. It's, it's tricky because no matter how you slice it, it's hard to come up with a good kit building system because Tarkov is so complex. And like, even like, I mean, even like the 
docs case example or you know people buy multiple doc cases there's still like some inherent value in like having all those doc cases because like you could you know it's a two by one that stores 16 keys or whatever which is like nice yeah. for i mean it's expensive but you know it's it saves space in your stash so it's like it's tricky um yeah i mean the one thing i will say is that like the one kind of problem with it is that yeah it will kick out all the keys into your stash every time when you're changing maps if you're like a heavy key user right it's i don't know like i don't know whether you can like tag the dogs cases and so it always will use i don't, I don't actually know how the functionality around tagging works because i know there's some issues around like consumables with not that aren't full and it uses ones that yes are not full and like, i don't know if you tag a docs case will it always use that say you do have seven presets set up for different maps like Will it use the one with the tag, or will it just use any of them and just like empty the old one out? I don't actually know. Um, I'm not a prolific keys user, so it's not too bad. And like, usually there's only so many keys, like it's not a problem. I yeah, you know, I try to keep my stash relatively clear. Like, you need to have a decent amount of stash space to make this work. In fairness, um, you probably need DOD in in honesty because yeah. you know stuff's being pulled in and out and like right. disappearing off your body, and it's not getting sorted properly in your stash. So it's like, yeah. It's not ideal, but I don't know. It's interesting. I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm, I'm, tr- I'm trying it out because unless I do it, maybe I'll, maybe I'll just count it eventually, and maybe I won't bother. But or maybe I'll just use bits of it, like the ammo loading. But um, unless I try, I won't run into the issues, and I won't be able to then like creatively solve those problems if I don't give it a good go. So that's why I'm, I'm trying my best <laughs> to do something. <laughs> like honestly, if there wasn't like barters or like, yeah, I mean, say barters and crafts. Like, if your only source was, like, if it was just pure rubles and only traders that you got the items from, and that was it, um, and it was, like, all rubles related, then I would say you could do, like, gear only, like, head, uh, you know, ears, helmet, armor, gun, and that's it, you know, anything consumable, just, like, do that on your own. Um, cause that way you could like kind of avoid any like weird issues where it's like, oh, I got, I technically, I have a slave on my stash, but it's, you know, 399 out of 400. So it's going to go buy a new one that I don't want mm. it to, you know, just something to like kind of simplify it down to where it's not so, but like I said, you know, you'd have to get rid of the bars and crafting and that's kind of it, you know, maybe you could have it like present to you the different options and you choose what you you know, want to buy, but then you like, how do you UI all that? It gets really complicated. Exactly. I like it. It's not, it's not really a good way because no. we just don't do the same stuff every time and we don't always have the same things accessible to us. Like, that's the right. main issue. Right. You know, if it was like, if you could buy everything at all times for rubles, then it'd be easy and presets would be great. Like, presets actually would have been better, like, back before finding raid. Now they're much less useful. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a shame. In some ways, like it, it, it's probably gonna be okay for Arena, I would, you know, think. Mm. But you know, it's not like Team Death Match thing. Like it makes total sense. And um, it's like that's preset orientated anyway. I think Arena, right? Yeah. But in a, you know, survival looter shooter, you know, this whole like stash management thing. I don't know how how much sense it really makes because you're, you know, there's like half of the game is like you. Clicking menus, the other half is like you playing the game and like bringing stuff out to use later, you know. And if it's yeah. not gonna use it because durability, like, oh, does it even count weapon durability? Like, if you build a preset for weapon durability at like 98, will it only look for 98s? I wonder. Yeah, I don't know. I actually don't know what happens in the loadout builder for guns. Yeah, because it's, it's not so weird. What I've ever tried to do, I've never tried to do it because it seemed kind of bugged because it was always yeah. like trying to buy like random barrels and stuff. I don't know whether they fixed that, but it was like trying to buy the. I mean, I guess it's true for any for like any of the presets, like the web, just the web presets alone. But like, it'll try to buy the MP5 itself, and or like it'll buy like the MP5 and the lower receiver. Like it was doing something weird. I can't remember the exact order. As if you but do like, like yeah, if you do like find parts, then it will try to do that. But if you build it from a weapon, yeah. then it will. Then it then it does it properly, you know. But like I don't like that. That was like the whole point is like you could skip that step, but now you have to do that step to do. Yeah, and it's like I build right. the weapon first, and then mm-hmm. I can 
at that point, I might as well just drag it to my slot. You know why? It's just I don't know. It's a little janky, but what are you gonna do? Yeah, exactly. So I'm on a I'm on a mission to make it work. I mean, I think <laughs> your I mean, I think your system makes a lot of sense. Um, and I think what you know, if you can implement it right, and you know, I think I think it probably works. Yeah, we'll see. I'm I'm testing it, and we're just gonna keep building stuff until you know. What's actually one thing that's really annoying? What's that? Is that the list can't be sorted. The presets list can't be sorted. They just go in the order. Because I wanted to call order them like which one, one you created. Yeah, one docs case woods, one docs case you know customs, one docs case reserve, da da da. But then like they're just all over the place, and you can't sort them alphabetically. I was like, no, no, dude, that well, sucks. You could code them, and then when you search for them, type in the code. Like if I it's, guess you could search. Yeah, you I could would do search. like a one for like your you know docs cases, and then like a two for your whatever. You know, cause that could work, yeah. Something I need to, to see what the limitation is, because I know in the weapons preset, you can only search for three letters, so maybe I'll need to be like uh, AAA, okay. AAA or like 111 right, or right. whatever. Like, I'll have to have a look at that, actually. That's, that's maybe a good way of fixing it. I think, can you search there in the presets? Can you search for a preset? I think you can, um, if I'll I recall. Check. I think you can. Good idea, though. It's not a problem at the moment, because I've only got like five. Hmm. But... Uh, now, I mean, weapon presets are so much better now. You just open the th menu and it's like, oh, there they are. That, that's really cool now. Actually. Yeah, that's a good change. But, uh, anyway, my, my mission for optimization continues in the face of adversity, Church. <laughs> we will find the optimal path. <laughs> Make it work. Uh, I'm just going to mention this briefly. I've, as you know, Giga, I've been playing Lost Light. I'm really sorry. I've let everyone down. This is my apology video. If we can get one like on this video, guys, that would just make everything better. For one like equals one prayer. Uh, I'm addicted to <laughs> shitty Tarkov mobile clones made in China, and I don't know why. <laughs> I was playing the Giga. It's like part nostalgia because I used to play a lot of like free to play Counter Strike clones from back in the day because that was like the popular game to clone. Um, so there's like a little bit of nostalgia factor, but there's also just like an interest in like the systems, you know, it's like, a, it's like, I just spent like the other day, like two hours, just like fully exploring the crafting and like flea market, like figuring out what's the most profitable craft. And it's not always like so easy because the market changes and, you know, this is like a smaller population. So like one person come along, buy a bunch of stock and the prices just radically change. Like it's very, you know, uh, Futile, or not futile, uh, can fluctuate a lot based on that. But yeah, just something about just like seeing like it's another game. It's Tarkov scuffed, <laughs> scuffed squared, scuffed squared. Okay, <laughs> it's Tarkov scuffed squared, <laughs> and it's just interesting to like play around with the systems and see something similar. One, so they changed a lot. And one of the interesting things they've done, which I think is a smart move for them, is they've made the raids non-timer based. They're like the cycle. They're persistent. So oh, cool. Yeah, it really, which really works well for that game because, I mean, it has a smaller player base. I think most of its users are mobile, and mm -hmm. which now they have platform-based matchmaking. So if you want to only match against people on your platform, you can tick that box. Which I think it's a good thing for mobile players. Me personally, I want any players <laughs> in my raid because it's it's like uh they fill with bots. Like players are filled with bots occasionally. I mean, I say occasionally, but so you know, eighty percent of the time where it looks like it's a player, it's just a bot. Um, Can you and, tell easily? Uh, yeah. I mean, they just like. Yeah, it's it's. But then, like on the character, like not just the movement, or whatever. Does it say like oh, is there a okay. dog tag or anything? No. Does it actually tell you? No, it's is just, there like a randomly generated name or something. It's like I yeah, it's just like movement, and then I kill them, and then you know, and it's kind of like DMZ. You go down, you get knocked, and you could be like picked up, or and they'll mm -hmm. just like instantly, you know, like three seconds later, they'll just like instantly kill themselves. Whereas most players don't do that. Like it's it's pretty. Uh, it's fairly obvious, but yeah, they don't have like any like identifier like, hey, I'm a bot. It's like very uh, used in this filter. Um, 
but yeah, the 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 persistent thing really works out well because of the player base. So you can stay in raid really long. And what they've done is they added this like sandstorm mechanic, where like mm-hmm. every fifteen minutes, the sand you know radiation sandstorm will happen, and you can't hear Jack unless you get inside. But in addition, you're this there's a mechanic where it was like sound because sound is also scuffed just like in Tarkov. Vertical audio sounds like it's on the same plane as you, so you can't tell up or down. But what they've done is like the compass, whenever your sounds are made, you'll see like a sound wave mm-hmm. and it'll have like its direction. So like if it's like off to the side, be like an arrow, so I have to like turn, which will move my compass, and then I can see the sound wave on the compass and locate it. But to do verticality, if the waveforms are like pointed upwards then that means they're up if they're pointed downwards it means they're below so you it was like an interesting way to like you know work around that issue i guess that limitation but uh during the sandstorm you don't have any of that so you like if people are running by you're shooting you can't really tell besides like the audio but it's already really loud but it it's wild because all the loot just gets like replaced like the bags will just like you'll be leaving a room, sandstorm happen, the bags will just like zip back up like you hear them all like zip. <laughs> it's like time to <laughs> time to reloot. It's it's pretty cool though. And I yeah, I really like it because uh it just makes the experience a lot more I don't know, it's just it just feels really good. I I I like I could totally see a world Tarkov does something similar. It's maybe like a mm. bit more immersive, maybe it's like a you know nuclear meltdown nearby and plants everyone getting to cover loots magically reappear you know whatever but you know you could make the mental leaps it it just be it's such a it's such a different experience than having to like uh, i don't know it just changes it cuz you never know what's going to happen what you're getting into when you pop in you know it's it's so different yeah. No, that's kind of cool. Like, I can see the appeal, right? You play a different game, it's like Tarkov, but it's like playing it again from the first time because you don't know what everything does and you don't know what the values of everything <laughs> is. I can see the appeal for sure yeah. with new mechanics, whatever. It's why people play different games in the same genre. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, and I was, like, I've been playing a lot of Streets and there's a few people actually who are saying like, oh, you know, Streets of Tarkov is like the only map that makes me think like, man, I just want to be like, I just want to get rid of the raid timer. You know, it's like the first time people are thinking about that actually and i was like yeah you know i i feel that because there's so much to do there's so many places that you, you yeah. could go on that map and like it's sometimes quite hard to navigate around it would just be it'd be awesome to end up in that type of state i i think it's unlikely that Tarkov ever gets there but yeah it'd be, it's, it's it's good it's a good idea you know it's, it's one of the best mechanics that the cycle brought to the genre for sure um so it's it's interesting seeing games like lost light taking that and introducing it into their own game. I think that's fu- that's fun. Yeah, it's fun. I'm glad yeah. you're enjoying it, though. Yeah, I can see the appeal. Yeah, I gotta stop soon. It's getting bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting bad. Do you feel that with the introduction of the segregated player base, if you want to, does, does that like decrease the pool of players if you're on PC? Because there are a bunch of mobile players who probably just don't want to play against PC players, so they probably check the box, right? And then they're in like they're in their own segregated pool. So the players left for PC is like all the PC players, obviously, and but then only the people who've got the box checked. Does that like decrease the amount of players in your raids? Do you think, but when you used to play, probably, but by how much I don't know. It's mm. hard to say. You know. Yeah. Is it noticeable though, or is it? Yeah, you, know, you can't really tell. Uh, maybe it, a bot, maybe a couple more bots. Really about the the same as like previous. Right. Like, because I played. The game a year ago it feels about the same to me i mean if okay, anything yeah. maybe feels a bit skewed um you know to where like i'm playing against more pc players but it's hard to say yeah yeah i mean how many it's, it's on steam isn't it yeah uh it can't be good it's got to be like sub a thousand <laughs> steam charts let's have a look 3,500 people right now. Wait, how many? And it's like 3,000 people right now. Oh, okay. That's, that seems about right. No, that was on Steam DB. I mean, we got actual Steam charts. Oh, no, that's about the same. Yeah, it's about the same. Um, All time peak 4,700. I mean, there was, yeah, like Monday. For some reason, there was 4,000 people playing on Monday. I don't know why. Uh, wipe. 
Oh, was it just wipe? I think, yeah, I think so. Uh, okay, so it went down to like 2k. I mean, it's never had like huge popularity according no. to this. But I mean, as you say, there's people playing on mobile and stuff too, so. I think it's more pop. I mean, it's got to be more popular, I would imagine, on mobile, but. It's, yeah, it's a shame because, like, if the game had more players, like, this is the other thing, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up here, but, you know, if the, if the game had more players, I feel like it'd be a pretty decent game, but, like, because it's free to play and there's, like, microtransactions involved, you know, they, like, constantly try to sell you anything and everything they can. You know, it's not <laughs> just cosmetics. It's, like, don't you want to buy more resources to upgrade your hideout? You know, it's, like, only 59 light points buy now, you know. <laughs> but... <laughs> The one issue I'm, like, finding is, like, because, you know, of those factors I mentioned, and, like, the progression's changed, not for the better, in my opinion, but now, you know, now you can just kind of just, like, buy, as soon as you get Flea Market, you can just buy the lit in-game stuff, and, like, mm -hmm. you know, it's got scabs, so you can do that whole process, but anyways, so a lot, 90% of the players I see have, like, class 5 and 6 armor, and, like, same with their ammo and stuff, like, they got, they got all the good stuff. Um, and so the fights become like very, you know, uh, not really coin flippy, but it's just like you insta kill people and you get insta killed, right. and it almost like defeats that whole point of the progression, right? It's like why, like you literally just start the game out and you get some good stuff at the beginning, and then maybe you find some stuff but as soon as you get flea market. It's just like just buy the good stuff, um. It's cheaper than buying yeah. from a trader. It's weird. But, they're kind of like running into the same problem that, that Tarkov did before Finding Raid, basically. And before the flea market bans in particular, actually, I should say. Yeah, the flea market bans yeah, is a good point. And like, it's because the recall in that game is so like manageable, like it's like Counter Strike, but like super light. Um, you just melt people. And it makes me kind of worried about recoil -E work and armor hit zones for Tarkov because I just feel like I I personally would really like my armor to do something. I feel like that just feels good, you know? Mm. And like because in that game too you can repair your armor with armor plates. Um it feels nice like if you're fight like it's great if you're fighting AI. Like it's fine that the AI is cracked out of mind, but they usually have like class fours type of stuff. Except for like the boss, but that's all in our story. So, like, it's, it feels good. It's like, oh, you know, my armor got messed up. I can repair it. Now my armor isn't as good as I started a raid with. You know, it's now 96 out of 96, whereas before it was, like, 150 out of 150. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's I, it's better than having it zeroed, you know? Um, but then as soon as you get in a fight with a player, it's just, like, regardless if it was at yeah. 150 or, or 69, it's just, like, you just get lasered. So, I don't know. I, mm -hmm. I really... Part of me wants the ammo to be like found and raid only but then if when i think about that situation i think you're gonna run into instances where like you get beamed and your armor doesn't matter and then instead of like it being a case of oh he just paid more or oh he just like progressed more because now we're kind of like in a progress more state where it's like yeah you got to progress to get the really good stuff then it's going to be like oh he just got lucky like he just found the stuff and I don't know if that would be any better or worse, but my hope is that, like, because it's so restricted by luck, and the luck's so low, that it's going to happen less frequently, so it might be less annoying. Because, like, on one hand, you got one extreme is, like, everyone's running around with, you know, patch 12.12. Everyone's running around with N995 and whatever. It's just yeah. kind of a... It's annoying. And then, on the other hand, it's like, Oh, he got the two percent drop for M995, and he's a god gamer now because of this. Like, isn't that kind of annoying? But maybe it only happens like two percent of the time, so it's okay. I don't know. And they still have to manage their ammo, so it's like you know you could easily waste it on like scavs or whatever. Yeah, and it's not like you know, it's like a one and one free kill. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, like maybe <laughs> it's like one. At best, it's like one raid. He gets to feel like a god, but. You know, I, I kind of feel like that would be more interesting. Like, what if you wanted to, like, assemble Exodia for, you know, the guide or something? Like, you know, I mean, you, you would need more resources, but it'd be, it'd be kind of nice to, like, piece together 
the best of the best stuff, I think, mm -hmm. over a long period of time. But I don't know. It just overall, yeah. it makes me kind of worried about uh, the future with uh, recoil. If it's too low, and then the armor rework, if it's nothing's gonna matter, everyone's just gonna die in like two bullets, and that's that's a wrap. We're gonna have to say, oh god, yeah, oh man. I don't even know how they're going to balance that, but anyway. All right. Well, we've been went over long enough. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you all next week. Catch you later.